Back, uh, we do have sound again. Uh, Emily Cozy goes called it uh, the best, uh, biggest hope for Estonian women in today's competition. Four years ago, top 23 in the uh, middle distance uh, final for her. So she has started already and up on the uh, starting line. We have Vega the Yavis Vestergaard. 33rd place in the long distance race. Good luck, Vega. Being best the Canadian. Next from the men, Amy Lebro and Amy Slinsk. Hello and welcome to the European Championships. Welcome back to the very, very green forest that we've got uh, here in Estonia for the middle distance today. Sorry for the late start. There are some very, very heavy thunderstorms going on uh, around the arena today. So we've been losing power intermittently on and off throughout. But now we're, we are back though and ready to start this middle distance final. Of course, we've had um, people, women uh, starting over over the last hour and a half. Uh, currently just finish, I think still uh, Sandra Grosberger from Latvia, but we will be here ready to welcome the top runners in very soon. Of course, the top 20 in each heat qualified. Okay, let's have a look then at the map. Very, very varied this map here for the, for the women's so, course. So we are in a different part compared to the, um, the long distance and uh, we start with a few shorter legs and you should really use those legs to get uh, familiar with the terrain and the mapping because you can get a feeling about how good or bad the yellow parts or the green parts are. Then control four to five, uh, root choice, the first one here and control six, the TV split, first TV split. Then we get into a totally different area. It's much more tricky, it's much more detailed. It opens up a bit, uh, especially at this point here at around 10 and 11. It's very beautiful for us down there. But then you have to be careful when you get back in this tricky and green area. And it's visibility is not very good there, but the runnability is quite okay. So we are back. Uh, Second TV control at control 14, then 15, 16, and 17. Really tricky controls when you get into the green and you don't see anything at once. You get kind of counter blind there as soon as you enter the green area and then straight back to the arena and to the finish. Yeah, it's a really varied course. It's really um, got those different parts of the te technicality, and I think we'll see a lot of mistakes, um, I think, as well, when people come through uh, all the different sections and you have to change between the bits. Let's have a little highlight at, at some of the particular uh, parts of this course. You can really get a sense of how green it is, that it is and the, the, the visibility kind of varies uh, with different types of vegetation that get in your way, uh, including those fallen trees. Yeah, and I mean, it's not as bad as it is here. Here you are in a kind of semi-open area just beside uh, marsh. That's usually the worst bits of it. As soon as you come out of this semi-open area with this green restaurant, it's usually much better. You, will, you might see it here in the picture now. So here the runnability and the visibility gets much better. Uh, often the, there's a big change in visibility when you come to these dotted mm -hmm. uh, vegetation borders. So that can be an indication of a change in visibility. Because sometimes even if it's light green or dark green, it's hard to s predict if it's good visibility or not. It um, really is. This is a very interesting control. Yeah, and it's hard to predict if it will keep as it is at the moment, because at the moment the red one is clearly better. But as longer we get into the competitions, of course, there will be tracks, uh, especially on the second part of the blue route, when you get into this uh, yellow area. You have to imagine that there is grass and it is up to your shoulders. It's really tight and it's not very good runnability, and you, especially you don't see where you put your feet, so that slows you really much down. Uh, it will be a big advantage for the late starters uh, then because they will track up. But I mean, it's not it's not an unfair advantage because they had the qualification. Mm -hmm. So if you're a late starter, you had a good race um, a few days ago in the qualification. This is very typical here for this part, this tricky part, this technical part. Um, visibility a little bit lower, but the green is actually quite good uh, when it comes to the runnability. So, it is tricky orienteering, but it's totally doable as, as long as you have contact with the map. 
Uh, once you get off direction and you lose contact to the map, it's it's very very difficult to relocate and get back uh, without a big time loss. Yeah, I'm sure lots of people at home Lord, already have been looking at a lot of the GPS tracking, spot spotting some mistakes, people having to you know bail out to. Uh, uh, vegetation boundaries and come back in again and uh, as you said so we had uh, so we've got 60 runners here in this final it was top 20 to qualify uh, most of the names especially in the women's made it through one big exception being uh, Sweden's uh, Carolyn Olsen and of course those heat uh, winners will be starting at the very end so real big advantage from having won your heat um, because it's just going to track up more and more and more as we really get towards these these runners towards the end and who do we want to be looking at for them. Yeah, I mean, you, na you named it before. We have the heat winners here. They managed quite similar terrain a few days ago in a very convincing manner. So it's, um, of course, the last starters, they, I, well, my feeling is that they feel c more comfortable with this kind of terrain uh, regarding the early starters. Something I want just to uh, throw in here as well is when it's when we are talking about tracking up i don't think it will matter in regarding the navigation i don't think it will make it much easier because usually where there is high grass the orienteering part is not a difficulty but it will make you faster because you don't have this yeah you don't have to run through the grass and you see where you put your feet so i think in this matter it will be an advantage when it comes to uh, the navigation i don't think that it matters too much so this is our current leader then here in the, on the picture, Mia Nittinen from Finland, who had caught up two minutes on Eleanor Ross, who didn't run the long distance. A really good, I mean, it seems to be suiting the Finns incredibly well, um, but still long times here. You can know we've got Vera Klemetin and Ina Vesterlund, who was our first starter. Um, it's her first international race, first time representing Finland uh, on the World Cup circuit. So we've really seen a lot of those athletes do very, very well. Uh, around here it seems to suit them incredibly well but still 41 10 we saw long winning times for the long distance for the women's definitely do you think we'll see longer than expected women winning times here today as well maybe we will be a bit above the 35 minutes but i'm quite sure that as we mentioned before that it's getting faster and faster and of course i mean the the runners are getting faster and faster as well so it's not only the terrain um, so I think we get closer to the 35 minutes, but maybe we'll end up in 36 and a half, 37 minutes. Okay, so here's some of our fastest women around the course so far, taking a look at how they've managed to do this. Mm -hmm. And you can see now here, especially this one is interesting because all of the fastest runners so far, they chose to go around there. And something that we noticed as well is when you cross the yellow area, it's usually very slow. But if you run just along the borders, then Especially there are... Especially that first bit on the way to five. Yeah, yeah it's really there, for example. But also in other places when you have these vegetation boundaries and you run along them, it's not as bad as you if, when you cross it. So if you go around there, you get first the track and then, of course, it's a bit more tracking up uh, along the vegetation boundary as well. Uh, Tiananmen then into top five spots after the race. It is, um, we have had a few really, really heavy thunderstorms around here. So it is, uh, it's still very warm, but it's now very wet out in the forest as well. So um, just uh, the conditions, I think, all around going to be quite tricky as the course of this afternoon goes on. And we're expecting some more as well. But let's have a look then at split control number one. This is control number five on the map and we're looking out for Lena Strand of course mm. uh, she had a good race in the long distance so I think there should be some self-confidence definitely yeah she was fifth in that long distance and, and uh. this is the route choice you were talking about so mm. both of those runners they went around to the left uh, as we mentioned before followed this vegetation boundary and now heading towards the first TV split and here at this point exactly this point it's a total change in terrain yeah. because it will be the runnability gets much better uh, not only um, when it comes to the yeah of course because you're not in the yellow area but also when you you're here in uh, this green area and the runnability is actually really good mm. and you can see the visibility is semi good but and it's okay as long as you have the map contact but as soon as you lose it 
I mean, there, it's hard to relocate because you don't see further than 30 or 40 meters and you really want to get the contours to relocate. And you don't get that because you don't see far enough. So it's very, very tough to get back once you're lost. Yeah, really tough. So Strand into second place then, a minute 26 down on Sanafast, who's had a really quick start. And you could see the way she was just checking a compass bearing there on the way out. Let's see how she's done and it. And she must have done a mistake already in the beginning because the time difference here is already a minute. You can see that the tail is set to one minute. Good speed as well, Sanafast. That's what you talked about. And then in this last bit here, I, I think they will run quite equally because it will track up there from the vegetation boundary into the control. Um, and here we see we are live with Lina Strand, but we see that Sana Fast is doing a mistake. And that's what I said before. I mean, you, it's a bit uh, misleading here because of the colors, but there are green parts. And once you get off track in these green parts, it's just so easy to get along into a parallel mistake in one of those depressions. Now, I want to talk about Marion AB because she had set some really quick times the first split, but was doing something similar to Sana Fast and really struggling. I think around the control 7 8, she had to bail out to the to the um, semi open area and then go back in and look how much time it's cost her. 14 minutes down on the lead. That's really, really gutting for her, considering her incredible She's start. She's not even stopping running here, going directly back. 10 years ago in the legendary cross. Okay, let's take a look back at lots more runners in the front here. More Swiss runners and Grace Malloy from Great Britain as well. Sarina Kibbutz on the way to the second TV split. So it's quite a similar part. Um, the second TV split is very close to the first TV split. So it's the terrain, of course, looks similar here. And you can see it just how, how difficult it is to see the contours around you. I mean, if you think back at when you saw the map, Yes, it looks very clear because you have all these contours, mm -hmm. but out, when you're out here, it's just they're blurred away. You don't see them anymore in the terrain, and you have to be very distinct with the direction and the navigation and really just pick, pick off all the features you want to see on the way to the control. Yeah, it's really tough. You've got to. You can just about, you know, see the the difference between the yellow and the the sorry, the green and the white as well. But it's still, you know, it's yeah, well, it's, it's, it's there I aren't mean, very clear boundaries. When you're in the green, you're like, yeah, this is yeah. a bit greener. When you're in the white, you're like, yeah, this is this is and a I mean, bit the, easier. The but terrain is very clear. It's mm. not it's not very difficult if you're just jogging. No. No. But the speed makes it difficult, oh. and then if you take a few, like a little bit of a risk towards one control, you have to be very careful. As I said, I mean it's a, you have to run on the. Yeah, I mean you, you have, have to run, run on the, the boundary. You have yeah, to you have exactly. to run fast, but without taking too many risks. Anyway, you have to find the balance, the let's, line balance. Let's talk about Tova Alexanderson. Of course, 17 world champs titles, uh, but she has not had. Really a great championship so far by her standard. She fought back so hard from a, she made seven, eight minutes worth of mistakes in the long distance and fought back to take the silver medal. Only 17 seconds down, as we see uh, Ingrid Lundin is here into the finish. Um, and I mean, Tova Alexanderson was saying her focus wasn't really there. Yeah, I, it, it was kind of strange, but I, I wasn't very impressed by her technical uh, race and the long distance and neither in the Middle East qualification. Uh, my feeling is a bit that she has just one gear and that gear is full speed and I mean if you do that you can you can succeed in quite many of the controls but if you just not succeed in one of the controls then you lose two or three minutes and in the long distance she did that two or three times and uh, she did that twice in the qualification as well so let's see if she can get the focus back today. So, Everly Karsaku here, one of the Estonians running on some home terrain, had a really good start to control number four, but was just not very confident, I think, on her. Just when you, when she entered the forest uh, into this control number six, where we get the time split, she's still in the lead, still looking very good, though. Mm, and it's very interesting with the Estonian runners. Many of them, they did a very good qualification, mm. and then they didn't start for the long distance. And my feeling is that... Um, I mean, they, they, I heard that they all struggled with some injuries uh, they had earlier, so they didn't want to take any risk. Because, as we mentioned before, 
um, this race you get a double advantage if you are a late starter or if you did a good qualification you're a late starter you get both the speed and some of the navigation and here in the GPS we see that Sana Fast really she was really fast in the first part but once this change in terrain came mm. she wasn't really ready to adapt your interior technique yeah, mistake for to number nine. We also saw a little bit of mistake for um, Serena Kibbutz as well. So, but Nissanen looking looks a lot cleaner around that bit. I think that's really what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be able to do work with all these different parts of the terrain. As we're behind uh, Victoria Haystad Bjornstad, who I maybe would have said in the past uh, more of a sprinter, but still, you know, pretty decent in the forest as well. And a lot of the orienteers, of course will have been preparing so much for sprint this year um, that I'm sure all the, the forest-only orienteers will be like, finally, finally some forest races on the international scene uh, as Bjornstad takes the new leading time there. Incredible stuff. Um, and, and I think some of maybe the all-rounders who are preparing a lot for the sprint would have found the long distance a long way uh, a couple of days ago. But let's take um, Cecilia fieber Klusner into the finish. The Dane, I think, had a reasonably decent start, but then has dropped time, certainly as well, maybe in the second half. Um, where you're just losing, can lose contact very, very easily with the map. Had quite a good race in the long distance as well. Ended up in the 11th position uh, just one month earlier. She was not qualified, selected for the World Championship. So it seems that she really got back some of the shape. Or maybe she had uh, also addition additionally had a bit more time to prepare for the forest. So. Uh, but a good race in the long distance. So let's have another look then at the standings at the finish. Mia Nittinen from Finland, still the leader at this point. At 41 minutes and 10 seconds. She came into the finish alongside Eleanor Ross from uh, Switzerland. So those two still out and out in the lead at the moment. And we've got some big gaps at this point where we've seen, I think, a lot of mistakes. So uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to just be looking at all the GPS, looking maybe comparing all the runners at the end and seeing where seeing where people are losing some time because certainly some of the some of the early runners we saw maybe going straight from four to five was not a good decision. But let's head back to the finish where Maria Lawson is heading out. She uh, had a pretty good uh, World Championships in 2021 in the Czech Republic with seventh in the long and 11th in the middle distance. And she is definitely one of these forest orienteers who's been waiting for the forest and the terrain to come back. And I know she'll be, she was 13th in the, in the long distance. So she'll be wanting to improve on that one as well, I'm sure. Here you get a view over this open area just after the route choice option. And you see, you just see how, yeah, how bushy it is and it's not the vegetation is not up to your knees it's really up to your shoulders yeah. and um and it makes it so hard to see the ground because yeah. obviously this is a this is a felled area uh, you've got the dips and the 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 lumps that that come with a felled area yeah, you, you just some, can't see and them you have some wood lying on the on the yeah. ground as well which makes it hard to have uh, coordination through the terrain so Lisa Risby here, another strong forest runner, fourth in the long and sixth in the middle distance at those world champs in 2021. Uh, didn't have quite perform as well in the long distance. She was 23rd, but she's going to want to uh, try and, uh, I think, improve on that. She's got strong forest form and, of course, qualified well to be starting this late in the start list. But we're looking for Sabina Hausrit here as we look across this and it's it's all sorts of stuff in here there's kind of young trees there's some young conifer trees uh, kind of pine trees uh there's nettles there's all sorts of stuff yeah it's just kind of concentrated hell yeah, <laughs> yes and it's not much you know it's not really much better going through the forest at this point and, and not towards the right hand part of this camera there are there are some as we said before, areas between the forest and the open where it's a bit more runnable. There's some tracks, but no. And you can see, actually, this control, this control number five, you can see the feature that it's on from quite a long way away, especially if you've approached it from the north. Um, it's not very technically difficult as we're on the, this camera is on the hill to the, to the east of the control. Um, you can see the hill that the control is on from, I'd say, 300 meters away, so but I'm not it, sure why you should be looking around like that. As you can like see that. here, the, it's hard to see the control until you're really up 
close to the feature there. You can see the feature from quite way back and then you get close to it and then suddenly everything's kind of lost in amongst the vegetation. But mm -hmm. we'll get Sabina Hauser its time when she gets to control number five, but just... Uh, but the, I'm not really sure what she's, why she's reading the map so carefully here. She just has to go into this yeah. more open, or yeah, into the back into the forest, into to this new area. Yeah, she certainly hasn't taken that line as quickly as we saw some of the others, really, have we? And you can see she's already two minutes down. And look, look at what the time, look at how much time she's lost from control four, which was plus one minute. Now to plus more than two minutes. And for mm -hmm. me, she just doesn't look confident here. Oh, uh, I think she lost, she must have lost time in, on the route choice as well. We saw her coming quite straight to the control. We which indicates that she went all the way through this semi-open area. Yeah. Um, and uh, as we know from earlier runners, it's almost one minute slower. And now she's off direction, and that's a really difficult task now. That's what I we were talking about before. You have seen the, the men, they have the same control, so we... Yeah. I think when you, when you leave that control, it's very easy to go left of the red line um, where a lot of the routes have gone. You really have to kind of c correct that and, and do a little banana shape to go back around to the... You have to be to very careful because it's so convenient to just follow the easiest way yeah. when it comes to the runnability, the easiest way. But then you have, of course, to correct back to get the right direction. Another uh, Swede here who is very happy, I'm sure, that the... Uh, Forest races are back, Joanna Oberry, and uh, she was she had a really really strong finish in the at the end of the long distance a couple of days ago to take uh, six spots, you know, top six six spot, incredible stuff, and she she's got good uh, consistent forest form as well with tenth and twelfth mm -hmm. in uh, walk twenty twenty. And here we see oh. Lina Strand exactly Gosh. that. I mean, she was really on direction. She was very close to the control, and it's the same control where uh, Mario Nabi had problems before. Visibility low. Now she's back at control seven, uh, getting some help there to relocate. But otherwise, I mean, once you're just kind of uh, moving around in this green area, it's, I mean, it's hopeless to get back. It's, it's so hard. Everything looks the same and you don't get enough information into your view to re really relocate. You're always uh, interpreting the terrain, but you never can just get it down to one place where you could be. You always find like two or three places where it could be where that you are. I mean, look around here, it's it's hard to get a glimpse of the terrain more than 30 meters away. Yeah, you can see, you know, the, the, just about the next feature, but you definitely can't see uh, any more than that when you're out here. And um, I think it's what we've been talking about. You've got to have the right balance of map contact, speed, everything. If you if you go too fast, you're going to make mistakes like that. And that that ultimately that's Lena Strand's race gone because that was too big a mistake for me. Uh, Serena Kibbutz has uh, fought back, I think, here to take that uh, place, current second spot there, 24 seconds behind Nittinen. So we saw, I think there was a mistake, control seven for Kibbutz there, and. Uh, really worked hard to, to make that afterwards. I think in a, in a group there with Grace Malloy and Vendula Hochichkova, so she caught up Malloy by uh, two minutes and caught up Hochichkova by three. And what do we have to say then about Ven Lahayu, the long distance champion from a couple of days ago. And she, I would almost have said she is better at a middle distance. She's got bronze at the World Championships in 2017 in Estonia, of course, and 2019 as well. And we know the Finns have been doing incredibly well on this terrain. It's similar to things that, that they're used to. Um, so hopefully she'll have recovered very well from the long distance to be able to take that. And let's have a look at Sana Fast. What has she been able to do? We, she, we saw her leading around some of the earlier parts of this course. And it looks like it's going to be close with Nittinen to be able to take a new fastest time then here. 
Mm, but at the second TV control, she was more than one and a half minutes behind Lietinen. So she had a good finish again today. I think Sana Fast is living up to her name. She has got really high speed, made, a, I think, a few mistakes out there in the southern part of the map. But she's managed to make up with it with very high speed. And she is not happy with that. I think she knows that could have been so much better. It is a new leading time, but it could have been much more. I mean, we have seen that she had a great start into the race uh, all the way to the until the route choice and then in the in the beginning of the second part she had big problems getting along with this new kind of terrain and new kind of technique you yes, have to use in this greener or yeah I, mean, I don't know if you should call it greener part but with the, in the part where the visibility is lower at least and this is it's so interesting about orienteering you could you can have a great result position wise but if you don't feel like you've had a good run it can feel like the worst possible thing um, but let's go back to the start we've only got three starters left so our three heat winners andrina benjaminson is next up she has, she is the silver medalist in the middle distance at the World Championships in Czech Republic. Uh, she did make a few mistakes, especially on the short controls a couple of days ago in the long distance, but what a strong forest runner mm. she is, and she could be one of the favorites. Let's have a look then here. Yeah, this is one of the this controls. It's, it, I mean, you come from the direction there, and then you get to this green area, and just to jump over into this green, you lose all of the confidence. Oh. It's really, I mean, it's really something different. You don't see anything around you. And it's just, you have to go after feeling a lot there. And it's only a few meters, but it's enough to just let, I mean, just enough to lose self-confidence if you're a little bit off direction. Yeah, I have to tell you, it's it's really, really horrible in particularly that bit, Control 16, 17. And I think that's where we saw Sana Fast was, was kind of behind at that point. She managed to overtake. But here is somebody who seems to have done a lot better in this southern part where other people have made mistakes. Karsaku is looking fantastic. And she was the, the top qualified uh, Estonian, of course, in the women's. And of course, I mean, we have you have been talking about the, that before. We had this sprint world championships, uh, which made that there's almost no one training for a story and cheering for about a year. Mm. And then going into a terrain that's so special within one month is really difficult. And then, of course, the advantage of running on home soil is much bigger. So they know exactly about how to run in this kind of terrain. They know how to handle this difficulty with bad visibility, runnability, how to adapt when it cha there's a change in terrain. Um, and you can see that here very clearly. So Marie Katani, bronze medalist in the long. Is she one of the big favorites for today's race? She is also the defending champion. Uh, of course, we, the last uh, middle distance we ran at European Champs was way back in 2018. So, uh, but she has got real class, especially I think over this, this middle distance as well. And she is someone who will race and, very well. And oh, here you can me. see the difference. That's what, exactly what we were talking about. If you go through this green, it's just a big risk that you will lose time because the run or the speed, you just can't get up in speed. And you see that um, Kasiku was running all the way around. And then also, as we mentioned before, along these vegetation boundaries, it's much better to run. Um, because usually, I mean, you have to imagine those are cat and areas from yeah. the beginning. So the the like the machines they were all yeah, driving all along these, yeah, yeah. these boundaries and it makes that there's some kind of a track and in my opinion um, people should notice that because it's very obvious and you should kind of take this into your route choice decision that along the veget like the vegetation boundaries it's often quite good to run but this will cost her about a minute at least yeah if not more let's have the check at the times when she gets to the next uh, control that's when we'll really really see it but that's a surprise for me that alex anderson has gone in that direction and taking that choice especially as a later starter when you think it might track up a lot more for me the the men's control is that you'll see that they also have a similar route it makes maybe more sense to go straight well i don't know but the women's you want to go around on that on that path and uh, so at control four she was plus seven so already slower than the lead and let's see how yeah, much I mean, time she loses between controls four and six we can uh, really compare it's this it's about yeah 50, 50 seconds. seconds she loses here maybe a bit more because uh, 
I would expect if they would run the same route that uh, Alexanderson would be a little bit faster mm. than uh, Kasiko. So not Alexanderson has really not had it all her way, I think, in these European. But if you so look far. at the speed she had in the long distance, this oh. uh, race is far from over oh, for her. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. she came back from like almost seven, eight minutes mistake. Of course, this this race here is much shorter, but but still, I mean, one minute is doable for to Alexanderson in a physical shape uh, as she is at the moment. Yeah, but will she get the balance right of speed and accuracy? That is really going to be what's going to what's going to show everything in this race. If you've managed to get it right with the speed and the accuracy, then you're going to do a good job. All right, Simona Abasold here is the final starter today. She had an absolute mare just on one control in that long distance, ending up with 14. She wasn't happy. And very interestingly, Simona Abasold came to Estonia straight after the World Championships. Didn't really get a strong feeling about her ability there. Went off to the World Games in the in the US. Came back for some more training here in Estonia. So she's really, you know, she takes this incredibly seriously. She's putting in a lot of time and a lot of many many days away from home to to, to try and do as well as she can on this uh, terrain. Mm -hmm. Here we have a comparison between Kasiko and Benjaminsen, and you can see just a little bit smarter approach there using this depression all the way up uh, the re-entrant all the way up to the control and it just makes it a little bit easier i mean both of them have seen this small tower there and then used the hill but then benjamin's wasn't as consequent in like in her approach drifting too much to the right and in my opinion she should just go down to this small depression and then use the re-entrant up because it's a very clear line all the way to the control. I think the visibility makes it so difficult to see the features but also so difficult to stay on your compass bearing that you have to simplify I think so much and maybe not orienteer how, as you would used to in order to to be sure of yourself where you are. But this makes it very important that as soon, I mean, I'm quite sure that she planned to see that depression and mm -hmm. re-entrant. And if you don't see it, then everything, like you should stop immediately because this is a really war warning sign that you have to be very careful now. And uh, I mean, she got even the line for the distance because of this um, semi-open area just behind the control or, yeah. So it's, it, even there, it's, for me, it's just a sign she's not 100% having map contact at that point. So that was Lisa Risby we saw through there at that split. I don't know if we're going to be able to catch her up at the next control, number six, to see how she's getting on. Here she is into this control. A little bit of a different approach as compared to what we've seen from the others, but very smooth out and good direction into the seventh. Mm, and we have many Swedish runners there on, from position two to five. All of them from Sweden. And here again, we are with Kasiku and Alexanderson. And it's kind of the same thing that happened to Lina Strand before. Just not exactly the right direction out from the control leading her down this depression a bit too much to the left. And then, I mean, she managed now to get back because she, I think she saw those two depressions and kind of could uh, relocate. So she had an idea about, OK, I'm not on direction, so I have to be a bit fr too, too far to the left. Um, but if she would not have had that feeling, it would have all, I, I mean, it would have ended in a bigger mistake. Yeah, she's trying to minimize her mistakes there. We see, as we see Finchalova, Nella Finchalova in towards the finish, but five minutes down for the athlete from the Czech Republic. There were um, eight Czechs managed to qualify for the final. Pretty good showing for them. And into 12th place, though, currently. Still some big gaps. Is this been a house for it? I think so. Yes, indeed. Towards uh, TV split two. I wonder if you can see there's maybe some tracks in here, yeah, but I mean, it's... I mean, you can see that there have been 
other runners before at that point, but it's not a clear line you no. just can follow. So you yeah. still have to be navigating very exactly in this part. Uh, but she lost uh, three and a half minutes here into fifth position. Yeah, and we saw she's not lost as much time maybe in that in that second part, but we saw her just being incredibly careful on the way through the mm -hmm. first split. And now we see that the three of them uh, quite equal when it comes to the running time at this part and splitting up in three different options. So let's see. But my feeling is that Kasiko, I mean, you can see the speed she can build up in this section. It's very good. And she's not taking any risk. I mean, Haru is running over a green area there and will then enter another green area, which she doesn't really know how good it is. Of course, in the second part there, it's okay, runability, but she can't really know that on beforehand. So in my opinion, Kasiku is choosing very wisely there, not taking any risk on a route that you, you can't lose, even if it's faster straight, you can't lose a lot of time there. And um, yeah, I mean, she will, I think both the others will be much slower. You can see here she's running with uh, around 10, 11 kilometers per hour and the others are like half of the speed. Yeah. And it's not even much. I mean, it's a little bit shorter distance-wise, the one to the south, Haru, but it's not that much shorter. No, and then you've got a maybe a less distinct entrance then into the control. I mean, you, I mean, you, could, you could help of this vegetation boundary definitely usually usually see them very clearly so th i don't think the, like the way to the control will be the problem but it's just so we were just seeing her fantastic route then to number five Everly kasaku in the background there has had a fantastic run we saw her do really well in the the section towards the white i think she's still leading in our second split and she's caught up some even more time on sanafat this is a fantastic run from the estonian putting it right just when it matters here on home soil this is a brilliant brilliant run from Everly kasaku she knows how to work this she got a good been preparing for many years and then it got delayed two years this European champs and I wonder where we, she uh, will end up. This will be so interesting to see because I think this can be a medal. Me and, too. Uh, I mean the race was so good. She she executed it very well. You could feel that she has an idea about how to tackle this terrain um, and as you mentioned I mean it's one thing to have an advantage running on home soil but she did a very good uh, there was also performance the in the qualification <laughs> yeah. and again there then she kind of jumped over the long distance in order to be better here. And yeah. that builds up even more pressure because then you only have two races, uh, one individual race here. And she did very, very well. I, I mean, I hope for the home, for the home crowd here that, this, uh, that she will end up high up the result list. I think she really will. Let's have a little look. You can see Abasold starting well. We haven't really seen her through the first split mm -hmm. yet. Really, and You high can also see her. that the speed from the, the other runners. Um, I mean, it's it's Abasold is definitely running faster than Kasiku, but Kasiku with a few good decisions here, just with micro route choices, keeps up in the leading group here, even in front of Alexanderson and Taney. Uh, but good start for Abasold so far. Yeah, I think this. I think that time from Abs from uh, from Kasku could be really well. Oh, Joanna Oberi is mm. looking around. This is a uh, control five, and once it is easy to see the feature from like 200 meters away, but once you get in amongst all of this rubbish, then it's so hard to see. Even though there's a couple of like advertising boards around there, she just needs to go a little bit further yeah. along because um, you can't really see the top of that hill when you're down in the depression. Yeah, but she should hills. really get, I mean, you can see that there is a hill. She should be able to go on the top of the hill and um, you should, she yes. shouldn't be down the hill looking for the control, but maybe she, she went up a little bit and didn't see the control. And I mean, there's a stone as well. If you kind of just take a short glimpse on the map, you could think that the stone is the control. Maybe she was even up to this stone and then going back again when the control wasn't there. But I mean, yeah, ah, I think she's unnecessary. It. Now she has it. Oh, maybe yeah, you can see yeah. there's almost, yeah, I and mean, she's, she's not even, not got even got there. To the next control. Um, yeah, so she lost a lot of time here. You can definitely see other, you know, other controls, maybe control 16. You'll have the same position. You can be so close to it. But here's Van Haju. Yeah, on the way to the first TV splits. So, so let's remember, we saw her 
going to the south mm -hmm. route to control number five. And, and she is off the pace from Kasiko. So she was 25 seconds down at control number four. So she lost 40, 45 seconds, so maybe a little bit better than uh, compared to if you go straight. Yeah. But still, it's, it's not as good as the option around. And you can also see that she is uh, together now with uh, Jana Sikova. She also passed Jana Urberi. You see the different route choices. Abersold now also going on the good route. This is a really good start for Simone Abersold. She had the fastest kilometer uh, pace in the qualification of all the heats. So um, she should have kind of good confidence for the middle distance, but still she was struggling a little bit because she never got a good feeling. And I think this is exactly the thing you have to overcome because no one will have a good feeling here. You have always, you get stuck at one point and then you think no one else gets stuck, but everyone gets stuck at one point. So it's... Okay, Lena Strand into the finish here. It's not been a good day for her out in the forest. We saw a big miss to control uh, number six, I think, uh, and a few misses around there, six, seven, eight. Uh, it's not been her day at all. Uh, and she finishes 10 minutes down. It's been a very tough day in the forest. I want to quickly go back to Simona Abersold because she's missing a championship title. She has won one uh, World Cup race. That was the long distance in Idrifel. But she, such as the dominance has been of Tova Alexanderson, she's not won on the European uh, Championships or the World Championships. So it's one that she really, really wants to add to her list. I know that for sure. Hanna Wisniewska into the finish for uh, Poland, but she only started two minutes behind Lena Strand. I think it's similarly a, a tough day in the forest for the pole. And this is, you know, we've got big gaps here. If you're going to do well here, you really will have done well at this. It's a proper championship course. Yeah, but it's also, I mean, never give up fighting because you can do a two minute mistake. Of course, maybe your chance to win the race will be away then, but you still can get a very good result. And usually, um, I mean, there you have as a nation, you have an eight starting position here. So usually it's very hard to get the top 20. I mean, if you compare the European champs and the world championships, usually it's, it's harder to win the world championships, of, of course, but it's harder to get the top 20 at the European championships. But if it's, if it's like this, um, maybe if you keep on fighting and don't give up, I mean, you can reach a top 20 here with two or three minutes mistake. And we saw a small mistake here by Andrine Benjaminsen. will be interesting to see what route she chose to this control and uh, what time she will have at this first TV split. Here she is. Yeah, here she is. We saw, remember that little miss uh, to control number one, just being too far to the right. And look, you can see she was already 146 mm. uh, down at control number My four. My feeling and is lost that a bit more time. she went straight as well because she will keep on losing time. You can just see how much she's looking around yeah. in the terrain there. You can't really see anything here. She also struggled before with uh, with a COVID infection just before. Oh, OK. Abersold will have had some great feedback. She's just caught up and overtaken the defending champion and bronze medalist from the long distance, Marie Cataney. So Simona Abersold is still moving fantastically through here, but now everything changes. Yeah, exactly. I forest. mean, we have seen many runners uh, getting along with the course very well in this first part, but the difficulty now is to change and adapt to the new kind of terrain here. And uh, it will be interesting to see. I think it's the first control is still quite easy, quite open, mm. visibility is good. The con like it's the, a nice the, route into yeah, the control. And it's it's quite there. a clear object uh, where the control is located, but then control 7 and 8 will be very decisive here. This isn't Alexanderson. I think this is Lisa Risby. Yes, I think so too. So Alexanderson certainly uh, is behind, but this is Lisa Risby and uh, current leader at this point, Everly Karsaku, yeah. who is our leader in the finish as well. So on her way to control number 14 then. And just looking to her right to see, uh, is that Maria Olausen, I think, uh, in that group as well? So there's a group of Lisa Risby, Tova Alexanderson, and Maria Olausen. But Risby is actually the best uh, in this group. Those three all started together. So uh, Risby, if she's caught up Alexanderson, that's four minute gap between those two runners. But the time is ticking by to that of uh, Karsaku. 
but she gets that control and a new leader then, Lisa Risby. And I think she wasn't the leader at the first split, was she? So, she, or she was behind Karsaku. She was so one she's, minute and three seconds up. behind Simona Appersolt. But I didn't see uh, Tove Alexanderson in this group, so we're still waiting for Alexanderson to the second TV control. And here they are, Appersolt and Taney. And now the two of them may be working together. So Abersol 39 seconds then ahead of Everly Karsku, who's still our leader at the finish, but looking great for these days. Yeah, and really of course now she has a big advantage. She has Marika Taini with her as well. I mean, Everly Karsku had to, to do all the work uh, alone. And I mean, it's not, it's not really about getting help, building up the speed or get, getting like a long just, but if you're two runners, you have four eyes and four <laughs> eyes see more in green areas than uh, two eyes do. And they really do. They'll be paying a lot of attention uh, to each other. But yeah, I still think we haven't seen Tova Alexanderson through that split time. So that means Lisa Risby has caught up and overtaken Alexanderson. So yeah, very, very tricky orienteering out there. And even that to the, the, the gap, you know, the top 20 within over three minutes spread just to that control number six. Of course, some of those in there will have taken the, the, the more direct route choice. Here's Alexanderson. Mm, and well, this is not a good, a good race so far. So this is her, her. control 13, yeah, I so think. So she has to go all the way to the next control. Maybe 30 seconds left, 40 seconds. And it's a big disadvantage for her. I really want to see what has happened with the GPS tracking for Alexanderson because mm -hmm. we saw her make a mistake at number eight, but there must have been some more in you there because she can't be this far down with some without hesitation some here as well. I mean, it's really, yeah, but you could see that she stopped in the right moment. She was off direction a little bit and just stopped and adapted direction, corrected it. So now going running down at depression here, up again. So here we have she her, is. but this is, I mean, that's, yeah, that her race. We can, I, I think it's over. fair to say that she has no chance to win this race. Yes, I, you'd have to have a, a miracle <laughs> to be able to catch up. Let's have look a look at what this. happens. So and here, actually, the visibility is really it's good really compared good. to the rest. But you have to be careful because the terrain is so, it's it's open, but it's turning. So it's, it, once you get off, it's very likely to do parallel mistakes. So you, that's what happens here. She gets up there a bit too far to the slope and then it's so hard to relocate because everything looks the same even though the visibility is good and yeah that's it's just and it's some kind of it's kind of typical because it opens up so much you think that you now finally get some time to relax and to kind of yeah recover from the from the brain work you were doing before and then that's that's a big trap because once I mean it's not difficult there but it's gets very difficult once you have to relocate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tona Begarudlia in here. Yeah, quite a good race for her. Maybe a chance for the third position. Yeah, really good here. Those three minutes down. She was 28 in the long distance it's two days ago. And it's her third World Cup round after running in uh, Idrin, Sweden, and uh, in Italy as well, World Cup final last year. So, not loads of experience for the Norwegian, but really good. She's going to go into the bronze medal position. Strong second half of the course, yeah, I think, I mean, there from her. There only uh, yeah let's say 11 runners left after her so i mean she's top 15 with uh, at least top 15 yeah. with three and a half minutes uh, behind so that's still i mean it's quite likely that she will end up in top 10 yeah um with three and a half minutes so that's uh, definitely a very good very good run a recap then of those standings at the finish everly kasaku is still our leader and uh Especially now we've had all of the runners through our first bit control. Her time is looking really, really good. Maybe Abasold will, will contend, but this is looking pretty exceptional. Then, for I mean, it's not only the time, it's only how she did the orienteering. We didn't see any hesitation. Of course, we had, didn't have the, uh, the GPS from the very end, but it looked very good here in this part. And here we have the comparison. How are you coming from the west here to this control? 
Abersol still going strong towards control 7 and 8. That's the control we mentioned. It's very important to get uh, into this part here with good control taking to 7 and 8. Um, this looks good to 9 as well, even though the GPS is not very accurate. So it looks very good. And I mean, the, you, could, you can't see any hesitation by Abersol. She also, she's glued to the line here towards control 10 as well. Um, but of course, I mean, we have seen it before, Tove Alexanderson did the mistake there, you have to be careful all the time. Yep, she's in a good position now, but there's still a lot of her control still to come, and you never know what's going to happen, um, especially as the, the terrain changes. You get a lot of, little bit of kind of blueberries out here, and it, it looks incredibly different. The visibility suddenly opens up, but the features are just that little bit different as well. We are waiting for maybe any Yalava. Yes, indeed. At a good long distance two days ago. Yeah, 12th in that long distance. Yeah. It's only a second World Cup round. And there have been a few kind of new names on the from Team Finland specifically who seem to be more forest specialized and they're doing incredibly yeah, well. And of course, so I mean, here you have the possibility to have eight runners at the starting line, not uh, as at the World Championship. So we have more runners, opens up a bit more for the ones having good shape. But I mean, she performed very well two days ago. And I mean, this, this is quite okay as well. Maybe not uh, as good as the long distance, but still. It'll be a top 10 finish here, and we know there's still lots of drama out in the forest behind her, so really strong. And of course, um, I wonder, you know, has there been an impact of the new head coach, Thierry Georgiou, moving from Sweden to Finland to I be mean, able to coach them? And he I knows mean, he how, to do a, how to do a middle distance. Yeah, and he won it 2017 in yeah. quite similar terrain, so of course, his advice and tips, they are very uh, valuable here. But I mean, she will end up in top 20 today as well. And we're back with Johanna Öberg. She did a big mistake, as we saw that too, just before the first TV split. Otherwise, I think the race may be quite okay. Three and a half minutes behind so far. Yeah, if you think th three and a half minutes down here and you, you look towards the finish and you think three and a half minutes, that's kind of actually a top five position. So. Yeah, but, but I mean, we have seen a big, quite a big mistake before. So beside that, her race must have been okay, at least. But yeah. of course, I mean, it, it won't, I mean, she, she won't be very satisfied because it's, it's a mistake that's really, I mean, you don't have to do this mistake. It was one of the easier controls. Here we are with Venla Hariu, winner from the long distance. Yep, she started two minutes behind uh, Joanna Oberi, so she is actually, mm. after her route choice to control five, it's not looking too bad here. Yeah, but it's two minutes, two minutes behind. But is there is there a medal contention? I don't know, let's have a look at... Rispi oh, and this Kasiko. is a tough control, this, number 16, but they seem to be okay. very, very tight, and you can see that just Kasiko is a bit more experienced here, and oh. Rispi now is totally off direction, and this section here is very, very different to all the greens you have seen before. It's a different kind of green. <laughs> it's really more, even more bushy, and it's... I mean, you can't see, like, two meters yeah, in this. Yeah, it's, it's really... It's leaf... You get yeah. just leaves in your face yeah. from all directions. and So the, the green at 15 is like much more mature trees and you can kind of, yeah, you have this, a this decent trees, visibility so it's and, and they're much younger trees at number 16 yeah. and I mean you can't see two meters. And we get back uh, with Abersold. Sometimes it's not always a good sign when you get someone into yeah. the GPS <laughs> here. We know that Kasiko did a good race back here. A little bit off direction, maybe, Abersold. Maybe she gets along with it now again. There's the men's control. Helped her to relocate, maybe. Just not very direct out of 11. Yeah, but maybe she, she just took the, ba the back of one of the men's runner. Maybe. Yeah, there's a men's they control now. Even though they come from the, from the other direction to this control. 
a small mistake, maybe, I mean, 15, 20 seconds. But this um, big re-entrant before the control yeah, yeah, with course. the depression in it is but so it, obvious. Yeah, but it gives you an indication about the distance. But if you're a little bit off direction, it, it doesn't really help you to, to like get on track with direction again, if you don't double check it, of course. You can see Haru as well going quite far up the hill there. But of course, a bit avoiding the. She wanted to get out of the green area just after control 11 directly and then not really on direction after that. Taini, still a good race here. And where's Abasol? Because the two of them were running together. Yeah, that's true. So, oh, she there she they is. <laughs> They're still running together. <laughs> So let's see, this is control course ah, number 13. But they she has to be careful here to not lose the back because we, as soon as they go into the green area, I think that Taini might disappear here. See that you can glimpse her there in front. But yeah. soon they will go into a very, very tight area. Yeah, so she was 1 minute 24 ahead and that time lost maybe with the not as quite clear direction to control number 12. But of course, Risby is current leader at this point and we mm -hmm. just saw, a, uh, did huge we see the huge there. mistake from her? Here's Taini. And let's see, I mean, if they go into this green area here, those 10 seconds here, that can be too much to see her. Okay, Abasold at the finish. She is fighting hard, but I know she will be hugely disappointed with this run. She's managed to catch, I think, some of the time back. But, I mean, uh, the number of controls I've written down here that she's made mistakes on. Route choice to number five, first of all. A miss to control number eight. A, a really big time loss at control number 12, where she nearly went back all the way to number 11. Alexanderson, it is not her championship at all. She will be absolutely gutted with that and she won't even be in the top 10 here no she will be outside the top 10 she is just struggling so much i think with this terrain and just hasn't found the right way to orienteer it's here the, it's not really something that suits her so well because as i mentioned in the beginning she likes to go full speed and she likes really to be on this line on this border between she's really looking for the risk of just just don't go over the border to be too fast to navigate and here it's often so hard to feel that border so it's so easy to go over it she struggled a lot in uh, the middle distance in latvia and it's kind of similar mm -hmm. type of green if even if it's not the same contours that she really struggled with for me inga dambe 45 year olds uh, was already at the World Championships back in 2001, so very experienced. Um, she was also running, I mean, the European Champs in Estonia back in 2006. She was running the World Championships in Estonia back in 2017. Now her third championships here. Um, best result in Estonia in the 11th place, 2017. Had a good qualification, really good qualification, but uh, here in the final, maybe be some mistakes. And I think at the finish we're also waiting for Lisa Risby. Uh, it'll be interesting, you know, she was second at the um, the intermediate control. I think she was there yeah. just in picture here. She is. So at the second intermediate control, it was only, Tove, only Simona Abasold, sorry, who was faster than her. But we saw that big mess, uh, the big miss at control uh, number 17, sorry. And it was that, I think, has pushed her three minutes down. You can see the gap going from 40 controls yeah, 14 to 19. I mean, uh, with Rispi that far behind, we can see it's more or less only a fight between Abersold and Kasi Kunal. I think, I think you're right. So I, I would say it will be a medal here for Estonia. The question is, the will chances, it be gold or will it be silver? The chances are getting more and more likely. Of course, Marie Katani is there with Simone yeah, Abasold as well. So, you know, looking maybe for a medal for her. But Risby equal fourth there. Such a shame. She, she has such a great run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see that from her reaction.
and uh, Oberi and Olausen just maybe uh, maybe they were in that that mess together, um, but uh, not happy there. Nearly, nearly <laughs> those moments, and this is what happened. But we're live with uh, Abasol now. She's a big advantage here, more than a minute getting into this area and here it's quite tricky because I mean from this direction it's okay you can can fall down into this de depression it to this yellow uh, kind of area and then take the control from there and now we have to leave the control through thick green uh, bits here uh, and then you will see this vegetation border and it will open up a little bit. I mean, you, the, the trees are not as high, it's not as dense, but it's a different kind of green and it's still tricky to see. And I think she she's very close she there, but she might look for a good way to get out. I think you can be genuinely like two meters away from the yeah. control there at 16 and not see it. It's and so close, but I think she's, she's good. I think that it's a good thing to go to this yellow stripe there now, follow it a little bit to the north, just to get the vegetation border to be very sure of where you are here. And of course, I mean, you can also see the vegetation border behind Control 17. So you, you, you shouldn't lose more than 30 seconds on this control. But it's hard to get, it's really hard to see anything when you get in there. So can, you can get really nervous approaching that control. For me, it looks like the medals will be on this screen. We've got Abasold, Kazaku, and Taney, and, and those are the ones I think and we're going to and uh, Abasold are probably together still. <laughs> <Yeah. What laughs> I don't, I, we can't see what she's, what she's doing. I don't think she's sleeping. No, I don't think, I think she's hiding. <laughs> I think, um, oh, I wish we could see what, what her face is like there, because this looks really good for a medal. And, now and you I'm can sure see that she's going to be watching what's Abisold going on. Abasold was exactly doing but I said, maybe not following the yellow part, but having the yellow part is this vegetation border. So now she should be, it should be clear for her where she is. And I think she can't believe it, can she? She just, she just realized that she will win so Estonians were hoping here. for the men. Yeah. And now Evelyn Hasiko had done the magic. This wonder. Yeah, when you when you come into the, the finish and you go, this is the lead, but, but you know there's so many fantastic women out there. The you don't know what's going to be, but this medal. looks really strong for a medal. Ben Lahayu and Jana Oberi both in here, uh, ready, fighting their way towards the finish. I think it's Teresa Yanashikova there as well, but uh, Ben Lahayu is the best of these three runners in the picture. Uh, but you can see she is behind Kasaku. Hayu, I think, will be out of the medals here as well after her win in the long distance. And uh, it was the route choice for con at Control 5 that really lost uh, the time, I think, for me. Uh, but maybe I some mean, small maybe mistakes Maybe there's as well. a chance if Marika Taini is not really fast enough or if there's a mistake by Abersold and Taini. Um, but otherwise, it will be tough for them. And uh, Joanna Oberi goes into fourth there at that point as well. So really uh, good, strong finish for her as well on this course. But now it's all about Simona Abersold and Evely Kasiko. Oh, she really can't believe it here. I mean, what a dream to, to pick up a medal on this home soil, especially after these champs are delayed for two years. I know she'll have put so much into this, but yeah, oh, but still this looks good. no problem but you for You can Abersold. see that Abersold lost time here, maybe 20, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's one minute left, but then I. I mean, the, the coming controls, they're not very difficult. It's, so it's more about Hario and Taini, and you can see there, a mistake oh. maybe that uh, Abersol did the same mistake. We don't know if they, no, oh. I don't think so. So we're live so now with Taini. It looks as if Hario could oh. take a medal. So the two of them must have split up, Taney and Abersold, yeah. and, and um, Abersold is already half the other way to number 18, and Taney must have lost her back and made a mistake then in that green. So Taney out of the medals, so I ha think looking good for Haryu. So Abersold, Kasaku, Haryu, looks like. Looks very much like this. Well, I don't think that you, I don't think that you, or not you, but Simona Abersold will lose 18 seconds on, or uh, one minute on, on control 18. Uh, because even though you miss it, you, I mean, it's, if you just would have this control isolated, of course you could miss it if you approach it 
straight ahead, but you have the path to the left, and it's so easy to just go out and relocate, and then control 19 is really easy, and control 20, I mean, it's more mostly transportation back to the finish. But uh, Evely Kasuku is going to be, uh, still, I think, have some nervous few seconds, uh, a few minutes before we see Abbasold into the finish, because anything can happen at the end, really, mm, and but, uh, it's quite... Uh, I think this will be the first gold medal for Simone Abersold. It will. First uh, at a world or European championships. Feels like she's been waiting for this for a long time. She's been kind of in the shadows of Tova Alexanderson. She's always been there. She has won one World Cup round back in Sweden, but she has put in so much work in this terrain, in the Estonian terrain. She's been here for several weeks between, uh, in between the World Championships, between the World Games as well. And I think it has really, really paid off for Simona Abersold. She was gutted with her race in the long distance, but she has put in the effort to get to know just exactly how you orienteer well in this terrain. And Simona Abersold from Switzerland will be rewarded here. She knows it's good enough. She was the last starter. She will take the European title, her first ever European title. Simona Abbasold is the European champion and it feels like finally for her. And on every picture you will see from her crossing the finish line, you will have the three men as well <laughs> just beside her. And she's running towards the station to upload the results yes. just to be sure uh, yes. that there won't be any problems. Because if you think back four years, last minute listens European champs we had exactly that hey, situation she knows she's done it <laughs> and a silver medal as well for Evelyn Kasaku she can celebrate in front of a home crowd what a fantastic run from her and great to see you know I'm sure her preparation will have been years and years in the making let's see what Marie Katani can do we saw a, me a mistake to the 17th control and it has dropped her down into fourth place. She is outside of the medals. Her and Simona Abbasol seeing a lot of each other around that course. But without that mistake, she'd have been in with a bronze medal. It's going to be, uh, I think, even fifth here for Marie Katani. Oh, so tough. And if you make mistakes out here, it's hard to win that time back. She's not managed to do it. It will be outside of the medals for Marika Taney. But uh, again, a good performance by the two finish runner, Hario and Taney. They had very strong performances in the long distance. And now again, I mean, uh, they will end up on third and fifth. And well, that's a good result. But back to Abersold, I mean, and Kasiku. I mean, it's for both. It's just when you saw their execution of the legs, it's just you could see that they had a plan and they, um, it just was very accurate orienteering. It was very good orienteering and, um, well, I mean, we're very close to this, to this uh, 35 minutes predicted and the, it's a quite a big gap between Abersold and Kasiku, but that's maybe to expect as well because if you just look at other races when you have the physical performance, um, usually it is around one and a half minutes or even more. Uh, but it shows that Kasiku really took advantage of the knowledge she has about the terrain and just did a great, great run today. And it's so nice to see that that every everything came together today. I mean, if, if she would have been even more lucky, uh, then she could have won this race because she did a very clean race and all the other of the favourites, they did mistakes, but not Simone Abersold. <laughs> not Simone Abersold, no. And that really, I mean, we could tell from the key, this would be the key, even from the middle qualification, the long, you've got to minimise your mistakes, and especially as the terrain changes, you've got to be good and in all of it. Look at this now, how accurate Kasiku is in every control. She looked, she took this re-entrance to control one, she used it to control two again. She was very good at this route choice here, both Abersold and Kasiku going there. How do you not having a good route here? Almost cost her the medal. To this fifth control and then into this second part, um, the more technical part in my opinion and here Abersold just ran away from Kasiku. In this first part, part here she was very, very strong. 
and very solid in look at the direction she has to all the controls here there's no hesitation it's really a straight line to control 10 and there in this part really you can run a straight line here i was a bit afraid she was going a lot to the north but just about exactly at the right time she turned uh, back to control 12. so uh, here as well coming back i mean there's no so far, we haven't seen any struggling at all for Abersold and uh, neither for Kasiku. Just here, maybe a short little problem at control 16. Then here at control 17 is the point where she lost Taney from the group. She was running around away from her. But I mean, it's a, if you look at this here, you can't do it much better than the two winners or the, the, the winner in the second place. So let's hear from Simone Abersold. And Simona, uh, very emotional for you. Congratulations on your victory. How are you feeling right now? Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. I mean, when I was in the forest, uh, it went all like planned. It was so smooth and felt like being in the flow. Then I made a mistake. I stood at the wrong control. Luckily, I checked the control number. And then I just didn't get it. And uh, knew that I had to take my time, stand still. Um, see what I did or uh, like find out where I went and that's what I did and then found the control. It was hard to find the flow again but then it just felt great to finish such a good race with only that one mistake and uh, yeah I just heard that the last time someone won was uh, Simone in 2012 and it's it's really cool to make it it's been a dream for me and that it works out that well after a long distance that was terrible for me that's uh, great <laughs> and what have you been doing since the long distance uh, to prepare for, for this middle distance today um, yeah actually my long distance was really good I kind of found the flow um, then I made a big mistake and knew that it was over. But uh, yeah, there were so many good parts and I just took the good things m with me and uh, tried to avoid mistakes like the last one. Um, and yeah, it worked out really well today. I had a great race plan. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy that it worked out that well. Yeah, you, you, you can see it on your face smiling so much. Yeah, your first individual championship medal, I think. What does that mean to you? It means a lot to me. I mean, yeah, as I said, it's been a goal for me to win European champs and world champs since I was really, really small. I always looked up to those champions in Switzerland that, that ran so well. And in the last years, it always worked really well but there was always that the last thing missing for the gold medal and uh, now it finally worked congratulations and thank you thank you so much oh wow i mean you can see all the emotion coming out there and she that we we were interested to see did she see that men's control to number yeah. 12 and she did and she exactly managed so. to, to to check the codes realize and and then refine the flow again. It, really it kind of saved her that she found the uh, men's control there. But interesting as well, as well that she could take out so many good things from the long distance, even though she had a big mistake. And maybe there also a shout out to the sports psychologist in the yeah. Swiss team to get her back and really see the positive things yeah. in this run and not focus on the mistake. And uh, yeah, you could see it was very emotional talking about uh, Simone, Simone being the last uh, Swiss to win the long distance or well, to win the But when you have Europe two contract. top runners in the Swiss team called Simona, yeah. I mean, you can see there'll be a lot of expectation on Simona Abersold, uh, just knowing that uh, she's got that and she's still in tears uh, on here on the podium. She's going to take her very first Ladies top of the podium. The on the ceremony, European on Championships. Alright, so three the different nations on this podium. It's amazing to see that Brazil as well. And for me, it's a bit surprising that it's more emotional for Abasol compared to Kasiku. <laughs> <laughs> but I think she's just, you know, I mean, she's only just finished. She's yeah, got a lot of emotion. It's such a relief as well. Yeah, I mean, she has, she has done, as she mentioned, many Mello. great performances. That's always, I mean, if you compete against Tuve Alexander, <laughs> it's so hard to get 
She's been so yeah. close yeah. so many times. And very well again yeah. from Ben Lahari as well. Uh, winning the first, the, the long distance, and then ending up in third here. Great week for her. And very nice for the home crowd here. As I mentioned, I mean, it's a risk she took not starting the long distance because then you have only one individual race and she did a great qualification. So she knew that she can tackle this kind of terrain. And, uh, but everything paid off. It yeah, really did. And the European champion, though, is Switzerland, Simona Abersold. And maybe this means even more because she, she initially didn't feel confident in this terrain. It's, it's more unfamiliar for her. She, she wasn't getting good feedback that, that she was performing well. She came back to Estonia to put even more hours in in this forest. And it's, it's really paid off because she managed to solve that puzzle of how do you orienteer in this terrain? How do you win a race in this terrain? And all of that has paid off. This is years in the making not just the last couple of years or even the last few weeks, and it's the, really years. Also very impressive to keep cool when you get to the wrong control and you see that in, when you have in your head that you missed one control with a lot in the long distance beside having a good race. I mean, that's exactly the thing that happens today. She had a good race and then there is a mistake. And it's so easy to get into the same thing again. But she solved it, she kept cool, she relocated, she stayed as long. I mean, it's, you could barely see that she stayed on yeah. the GPS, but it looked for like her, a she must have It second fell. mistake yeah. rather than, you know, like an eight-minute mistake she made. Um, yeah. She made in the long distance. I mean, she, yeah, she, for her, she, it must have felt like ages, because in the middle distance, you really feel the seconds just tick away. Um, but the, that was very impressive, um, how she handled that situation. Okay, so we can look then, those are the standings um, after, of course, the first World Cup round uh, in Barros and then the two races here so far. The world champs no longer count for the World Cup standings, so that is how things stand at the moment when you add up all of the points. Um, interesting, I noticed some of the, the, Nor the Norwegians, the top Norwegians weren't maybe the ones we would expect, as I think a new crop of uh, Norwegians coming through uh, into the, the top spots into kind of top 10s, top 20s. Um, but we move on, of course, to the men's race where we've only got about uh, kind of 25 minutes left until the last starter goes out. And this was very interesting one in terms of those who made it through the qualification or those who didn't make it through to the qualification. For example, the long distance European champion, Martin Rayborn, missed punch in that qualification. He's not there. Uh, Elias Kuka, third place in the long distance. He's not there. He was just, he was one place outside of qualification. And a couple of the others in the top 10 also not there, but we will have another look at mm. their map. A bit different for the men's here today. A, a bit different, but I mean, the idea behind the course is quite similar. You have this uh, first control also here. You go into this green area. Try to adapt here in the beginning. It's not very difficult here, but it's the same difficulties as in the women's race. Be careful when you enter the green. And then here again, Route choice, not exactly the same route, but quite similar options. You can go to the left, what we have seen was faster in the women's race, or you can go around. Mm, I don't think it will pay off, go straight, but maybe sometimes it's a bit different between the women's and men's race, so let's see. Control eight and nine, you go into this very dark place there. <laughs> it's very, it, I mean, you don't see a lot when you enter, but you have good help before, so you're quite sure where you enter the green area. So it's not just about luck then. You go into this more open area around control 12, 13, 14. Be careful with direction. We have seen that in the women's race. It's Even though it seems easy, there are some difficulties. Then control 16, 17, 18. Really be careful. In this area, we have seen mistakes. N control 19, in my opinion, a bit more difficult from this direction. You have a possibility to go around to the left. 1920, also this one different. You will have some of the tracks from the women's race there as a help towards control 20, so maybe it tracked up a bit, but of course it doesn't help you with the direction to the control. Again, also here in this race, it is a big, big, big advantage to be one of the last starters. Um, I mean, the, the early starters, kind of the water carrier, kind of... <laughs> guys for the others. Taking one for the team. They have to take one for the team. So we have some big names in the beginning. For example, 
Casper Foster, but it's so hard to be fast in the beginning, and this really is not a total reset after the qualification. You still have this disadvantage if you missed at in the qualification because you have a yeah you have a worse starting position. Yeah, we, it's going to track up, especially in those open areas. The later starters, and if of the last twelve starters, only three of the men finished yesterday's um, no two days ago the long distance many of them weren't even entered for the for the long distance or or didn't start or mispunched but um, we can have a look at some of the uh, those who started early those who didn't have a good qualification Magna Daly being one of them uh, to see where they will end up uh, because really they yeah it's hard I mean, for them to do well at this I mean, point. He, he has the knowledge that he had the problems in the qualification and he also knows about... I mean, he will notice that if he doesn't know him beforehand, he will notice on the way to the second control that it's not an advantage to go out first, enter these yellow areas and set the tracks. Um, so it is tough for the early starters. Yeah, and Magna Daly in through here into the finish is in currently in fourth place. So two minutes down at this point. And I think we will talk through some of the other leaders. Here's Emil Svensk. He was number 12 starting out there. And of course, fifth place in the uh, long distance. He is the European sprint champion. Maybe, I mean, it's not, he didn't start so early. So if you are mid competition, you also have the women's race before. So it might I mean, might he's still in 12th up. place, only six places behind uh, Magna Daly. So it's still pretty early. Yeah, but yeah. But you still you have to swim. I, I think it will track up all, already after a few runners, but it is early still. Uh, it's not an advantage, neither for him, but it gets better and better with every runner, that's for sure. It really does. And fighting through some of this terrain. And in this uh, part here, of course, it doesn't matter at all. The starting position here, it's not tracking up. He and had a good he, race. Yeah, he did have a good race. He, when he finished, he was uh, in the lead, uh, actually just ahead of Kasper Fosser. Um, we'll get his time as he comes into the, the finish, but spoiler alert, he's not leading anymore. We've just had a whole group of people into the finish who I'm sure he'll catch up with uh, very, very soon. Kasper Fosser, of course, is um, another one we were chatting about, fourth place in the long distance. And um, I mean, we've, we've talked so much about Kasper Fosser this season already and the, the difficulties he's had and really fighting back to be able to perform at those um, sprint world championships and take ultimately uh, the win there in the in the sprint race. But I think he has a bit of this, a similar approach when it comes to orienteering as to where Alexanderson. For him, there's only one kind of gear and it's full speed. Yeah. And saw that in the long distance, we saw that um, also in the middle distance qualifications. It seemed that he overpowered it at some parts from time to time. I mean, he did a good long distance, but if you remember back in the, yeah, 2021 He's last year. He's long distance races. Yeah, he, there he would not have needed to be in top shape to win it. Yesterday, the yeah, the technical performance was just not good enough. And he strikes me as well as a bit of an all or nothing runner. You know, he likes to win or it's, it's, but it's not good enough. it's very often all. Yes, <laughs> it is very often all. I mean, already two World Champs golds uh, for him. Loads more other wins in the World Cup circuit. And we can have a little look. Algidas Bartkovicius and uh, Johansson here. Anton Johansson is our current leader. Look at that time, 35. 57. Such a talented, talented runner uh, as a junior and then the first senior years you could see that he is just everything you need to be a top orienteer but he struggles often with injuries and uh, it's nice to see him back, it's nice to see him in good shape here and I mean look at the time, it's 35.57, two minutes ahead of Loi Capen. Yeah, That's so he caught race. up Lurk Capen, he caught up Algirdas Barkovicius, and the, the, the three of them were able to go around together. Let's and have a so look. So look at the route choice here, as in the women's race, many Good. of the top runners go around there to the left. 
Then into this area. Here it's not as crucial from the beginning. You get a bit more time with adapting to this uh, new part because you have a long leg from 7 to 8 and you can cross this difficult part. So you get an indication there how difficult it is. Uh, but you see also here that Yuan Son, he's just so good in reading the map in high speed and get every single detail there around control 17 and 18. Maybe a little miss for Foster at 18, but oh, goodness me, that is really well done there. The, the, look, it's going to be hard to improve too much on that. Okay, Matthias Kibbert, he does start. We know he, he didn't start the long distance. There's been a bit of a stomach bug going around. Uh, he's the world champion. He is the European champion as well. He's so good at these middle distances. But we know there's been that illness going around the Swiss camp. He didn't start the long distance. Yeah, and he has Who had knows? both of it. He has both had, uh, most likely had Corona and these stomach problems in about, both in about one and a half weeks. So, so too is this man, Daniel Hoodman, yeah. who we're waiting for as well. But I don't think he had the coronavirus, but he had it very badly with his stomach problems. So uh, it's good to see him at the start line. Let's see if he, if his body is good enough today to have a good performance. I think here we will see him very soon. Here he is. And that's kind of, it, it is a terrain that could suit him well. Uh, he's very strong working with the compass, having direction, even though uh, you have to adapt and go to the left and to the right every now and then. So this is one of his big, big skills. And of course, he has the routine as well to perform well yeah. here. So and also he, I mean, he has been here before the championships in Estonia. Yeah, he's got 13 world champs and European champs gold medals, two of them being in the middle distance. So, yeah, he, he is one maybe when the when you can't run quite as fast, he's got that time, but you can see he's already yep. down at this point. He's see, 53 late. seconds. It's 106, 107 now. Will be a bit more. Now he's stopping. You can see it now. He has... Uh, I mean, it, basically, it's good to see that he's stopping when he's not getting it in, in the forest. So I, I don't think he will do a mistake here. But of course, it's the stop and go cost time as well. And that's something that Anton Johansson is very good at. And Anton Johansson is, is leading at, at all the split times at this point, even, you know, even as we're getting quite late into the start list, like uh, Daniel Hoodman. And here is Joey Hadon in the comparison. And he's just off direction here. And here you can see the difference. Uh, he's not getting this. He's getting up a little bit off the, uh, the re-entrant there and just following a bit much to the right and then not having the direction. Joey Haddon looks like he had a very special race in the long distance. Um, a couple of days ago, I was watching the GPS tracking from home and it just seemed to mistake on every other control and, uh, and didn't ultimately go around all the controls. Uh, but uh, Kenny Kivakas is, there are three Estonians in the last 10 places uh, on this. Uh, and he is the first one, 26th place uh, on the long distance. Oh. Struggling a bit here right from the start. But I mean, uh, also he had a good qualification. He's kind of the only Estonian that had a good qualification and still ran, decided to mm. run the long distance. But as I mentioned before, the others all had struggled with injuries earlier this year and didn't want to risk anything at the long distance when they have such a good position for the middle distance. So we're behind Aston Key of Australia, who looked like he was on the edge of some really fantastic performances uh, in sprint races this year. And being less than a minute down at this point is very, very good for the Australian, who you'd imagine to be Better in a sprint than in the forest, but really good start for Aston. And here we have the comparison kibbutz Johansson. Usually it's not a good sign nope. for the one compared with Johansson. Uh, it's a bit on the Hadon route, but not really as extreme. But look at it. I mean, it's already half a minute at control one. Of course, there is time left, but we haven't seen Johansson doing a mistake on the whole course. So you have to do it physic physically to win it back. Max Petterbema. Then into the second TV split. And again, these, these uh, TV splits are the same for the men and for the women. And you can look some Swedish domination at this point. Running together with Oli Oyanao. Guess. Aro Aho, it is. Waiting soon for Oyanao, but he started two minutes behind. 
Beamer. Oh, you could just see how he's looking around there. And and this is the case where you've got your four pairs of eyes helping out. You can you've always you're trying to do your own orienteering, but you're always gonna pay a little bit of attention as as to what the, the person next to you is doing. Mathieu Perrin. Mm -hmm. Quite a good race. But not really good enough to beat Antonio Anson. But he's been working hard alongside William Blumenstein there and will be rewarded with a third place currently. Mm, and Blumenstein into seventh position. All right, then back at the start with Florian Hovald, who didn't run the long distance. Well, he, was, he wasn't due to run the long distance either. Uh, he has a bronze medal in the World Champs middle distance back in 2018. That was in Latvia. This is... Oli Oya now. Yep. On the way to the second TV split, so he's still some time le left there. One minute behind at this point. There are many runners around one minute behind. And Oli Oyanho was such a great junior, taking uh, six J Watt golds. Um, but now, you know, maybe a bit of a dip when he moved into being a senior. It's so hard to, to progress and, and go from being a great junior to being a great senior immediately. It's only people like Casper well, Fosso have been able to do it. But he's, he seems to be getting, you know, now reaching kind of... Uh, maybe having a little bit more of a breakthrough in the last yeah, but sometimes of years. it's also when you when the runners are really good as juniors, it depends very much on how much they train already as a junior. Because if you if you train 700 hours uh, a year already as a junior, how could you improve that by very much? But mm -hmm. if you build it up very slowly, of course, you might not be a, a successful at Javok, but uh, maybe later on. Uh, I don't know anything about the training of uh, Oyano, but of, like often when you when you have juniors that are so good uh, in junior level and then have a hard time no to improve, to yeah. um, then this can be one of the reasons at least. Okay, so Hadorn uh, dropping a little bit more time now between controls five and seven. But of course, remember we saw him with that mistake to control number one and already down outside the top 20 at this point. Much more uh, kind of closer times in the men's as, as we would probably expect. And this is the comparison between Kratov and Johansson. See that, uh, I mean, what we have seen in the women's race, it's not a very, very good option to go this one, but it's not as bad as the red one. So uh, Ben Lahariu, I think, went this way as well mm -hmm. to this control on this route choice. It was about there. It was about 40 seconds slower. Um, let's see if it's the same in the men's race. But my feeling is that the blue one still is faster. Yeah, it's a shame for Kratov. He's such a, a strong. Um, middle distance orienteer, particularly two, bro two bronze medals in world champs, including one in uh, 2017, where it was in Estonia. But now I'm really interested in the two Sil brothers here to see what they can do. They probably won't have heard anything about the success with their teammates, but neither Larry Sild nor Timo Sild sa uh, started the long distance race. They were due to, and they, they didn't. They just, they chose to sit it out. So, the two brothers and Ari Sild is the younger of the two. Uh, you know, I think they will they will have a lot of expectation, a lot of pressure, maybe after their great qualifications, and uh, they will really want to emulate what Evely Karsaku did. So we will see what happens. They know how to orienteer on this terrain. Mm, these are the standings. Still, Antonio Anson with a big lead over the two French runners, Loïc Capern and Mathieu Perrin. Quite a good race by the two French runners there. Of course, uh, Capen maybe with a big of an advantage following Antonio Anson. 
or at least running together with him. We don't know if he was just following or if he... All right, Albin Riedefeldt. Say he's one of the, the forest specialists in the uh, Swedish team. He too didn't. He was. He was never due to run the long distance. So all on the middle for him, and Timo Sild as well. You know he's had some really great results, uh, kind of around the top ten in forest races before. But can he make it mm. better again? Can he get on that that top six podium that we like to talk about? Here is a uh, yes. No, two days ago, he was a silver medalist, Eskil Shinaberry. But you look, he's lost mm -hmm. time throughout the course, especially between 7 and 14. So the world champion from 2018 in Latvia in the middle distance. But as you mentioned, he lost about a minute. I guess uh, there must have been a mistake there at some point. Ah, now you can see he's not really sure about direction. Yeah, changes that direction left a lot. Maybe you can see the uh, you can see the white um, hill fairly easily that he would have looked to his right and seen that, and then into this little re-entrance. So nearly two minutes down. Let's have a little look. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing Johansson or you know the Maybe we, we see the, the mistake. Track. Yeah. Looks good so far. See it, I'm seeing, we can see him seeing doing a mistake there to control 12 as off direction, following two up high. Do another quite big mistake here. Didn't see really the problem, Shindabari, but I was focusing on him since <laughs> tracking. And uh, now we're waiting for Alexander Kratov. So let's see now the route choice. Yeah, he Difference went to the there. south. My feeling course. was that they, he had a disadvantage already at control five, just before the long route. So let's see. Soon we'll see the split, I guess, at control five. I love these running run cam shots through here. It just shows you how the terrain looks and then these different pockets of runnability and visibility as well it's just it's very very changeable i mean it is very green here but there are also there are bits where it's okay and yeah down to 13th spots and 51 uh, i think he had a disadvantage already at the fifth control but it wasn't two minutes so no. uh, he must have lost there and this is kibbutz on the way to the first TV split, my feeling is that he's late as well. It's my feeling too, as he started two minutes behind Yes, Kratov. indeed. This will be, I mean, it's... But we saw him a bit, not very distinct into control number one, and he was 28 seconds down, and yeah. then he's gonna, I mean, he lost about 23 seconds that first control, and he's losing more, and you can, you just see the, the head when it turns, and you kind of know not everything is okay. Just an extra check, stopping and making sure. Ooh, mm -hmm. And now, especially when there's a camera yeah. in your face, this is not fun. I, my feeling is that he has to go more to the left as he's doing now. It's not, the, it's not the most difficult control. It's quite open there. But it's the, the thing is that right when you enter the forest... Um, the visibility drops as soon yeah, as you're and in. There are some trees lying on the, on the ground, so you, tr you kind of want to avoid them, and then you go off direction, and you have to get back there. Otherwise, the, you can see the control seven there. You see that on like five to six, Jonsson was 14 seconds faster than, compared to Kibbutz. Maybe also an indication that Kibbutz physically not on top today, and Kratov going quite straight there. Oh, 140 though, yeah. lost but I, for that I mean, choice. When he goes down there, he should go all the way around and not entering the green in the later thing. Then he could go straight ahead from the beginning. Mika Kimmler, he was the last of the uh, Finns to go out. He, he took top tens in both Forest individual races at uh, Walk-In 2021. Tenth last time. Gustav Bergman was ninth on the long distance. 
and he is missing something very much like Simona Abersold. He is missing that championship gold. He has, of course, also won World Cup golds before, but they weren't in a championship race. Yeah, and not, not an individual one. Not an individual one, of course. He's won. He's won. Uh, one relays relay medals, and mixed of relays <laughs> many and of those but yes he cited many of the relays but i mean he's always kind of a favorite and you always have the feeling that he's so strong now his shape is so good when you see him in scandinavia and then you go back and he's it is the championships in he so far never really got it together but maybe today maybe today that's what we say every time well, every time he starts, he's in with a chance. And you're right, his form is, you know, his form, he wasn't the best as a junior, but his form has just gradually hey, he improved. He was good as a junior. Oh, he was still good, but his, his form has gradually, gradually improved. Uh, Max Bezabema then will be outside the top three at this point, but still a pretty a solid run from him here. Not many, too, too many time losses, especially, I think, in that second part. And we'll go then into fourth place. But still lots of runners still to go. Aro mm, Aho from Finland to the finish will be into 11th position. Shared 11th together with Magnadeli. And then we wait uh, for Oli Oyanaho. Here he is. Here is the other Finn. Uh, where can he end up? Can he end up in a medal position at this point? He was 133 behind at the second TV control. It's increased a little bit. Almost matching that high speed of Johansson. Oli Yanaho into a very solid second place there. But I mean, look at that. The run from Johansson was so good. It's still nearly those two minutes that, it, that his lead at the moment. In a sprint, he has competed in European Championships only so far, with the 19th place in a knockout sprint and 44th in a sprint. So today could be the best middle distance result for him. At the World Championships, he was 36 in the middle. And Here we have a comparison between Florian Howald and Anton Johansson. Quite similar speed here. Quite similar approaches, maybe a bit more straight to control five, then different exit, mm -hmm. and I don't think this will pay off for Hovaldo. Entering at the worst possible position oh. into the green. He was four seconds ahead of Johansson yeah. at number five. And he will be yeah, far off the pace oh. of Johansson. It's, I mean, he will be one and a half, he will lose uh, at around 140, 150 as uh, Kratov earlier. So that's a pity for the Swiss. That's too much of a risk. It's too much of a risk. I mean, it's so... That path is so close, and it doesn't even go that far away from the line. I mean, it, take, it takes some courage to go that far away from the leg, especially on a, on a course where, in many parts, it's best straight to go ahead straight, is, go yeah. is good. But, I mean, you could, when you see that leg, you could really see the course planner sitting there and trying to find some route choices where it's actually worth to go around. And then you could expect that it's not a too bad thing. But of course, I mean, it's a decision you have to take. And you do, as I mentioned before, the green, the dark green is not exactly the same everywhere. But it's not good at any point. <laughs> No, goodness me. Uh, Thomas Grifter, we just saw there, who's the uh, last starter. I'd say a little bit more of a sprinter, but um, of course won his heat. So uh, mm -hmm. really made, he's managed to figure out how to orienteer well in this terrain. Kenny Kivakas, though, on home soil. He's losing time here already and on his way to control number seven, this first split. And Yeah, that's not really... That won't be it. He's too far off to be really high up in the result list in the end. Even though, <laughs> of course, he can win back a few positions here if he has a clean race, but yeah, he won't get up there and do the same as Evely Kasiku. But it is the first of three Estonians uh, here at the end of the race. So back behind Aston Key, who, where was Aston at our first split? He was in seventh place, I think, a couple of minutes behind. Yeah. He's lost a little bit more time. He was 55 there. seconds behind. 
This Lauren is Florian Hobald. Hobald. Let's see the damage then. He was four seconds ahead, or just yeah. one second ahead now, um, at the and now he's uh, off. fifth control. Still some seconds to go to the control. Maybe about 20, 25 seconds from here, or from the entrance. And of course, he won't really know unless he gets caught by anybody that that, that I, route choice was bad. I will think he? he gets a feeling that if he gets stuck, that it's at least that it wasn't fast. Um, but of course, he doesn't know how much time he lost. And 1:27. Of course, in this position here, it's only he's only in 12th position. But in the finish with 1:27 behind, you're in second position right now. So we'll see how that race And develops. I mean, he has the speed because he was in front of Anton Jonsson yeah, in yeah. the beginning of the race. He's just got to keep that flow, keep it going. And, and especially as it, as it changes, the, the, the type of terrain changes and the type of orienteering changes. Uh, Eskil Shinneberry then here, he will maybe go into a new third uh, place for the uh, Norwegian silver medal in the long distance. It won't be... The medal today, equal third at this point, but a much better long distance from him. Yeah, and here we have Lauri Sild as well. He was in contention, he was even in the lead at Control 5, but also he not with the best route. And uh, I think it's starts to be fair to say that this is the decisive leg here. If you don't get the right route here, then you're quite off the pace already. Even so if you execute it well, the other ones, you will lose about one minute. Here he is. There is Larry Sild, but I reckon it was about the same time loss as uh, Hovart or even there. Or even bigger. Yeah. He was so quick to, towards that f uh, the fifth control. He was right up there alongside uh, Anton Johansson, but not... Not with that route choice. Quite similar position now to Florian Hovalt. He's in uh, 12th position at the moment. 127 behind. Maybe lost even more. Ah, it's quite, quite yeah. similar. <laughs> similar, very similar to Hovald. Albin Riedefeld. So he on the way to the first split, and uh, I think this is a better time now because he started right after Lauri Silt, two minutes behind. Maybe not the fastest time, but one of the fastest times. Another Swedish runner with a good start here. Will most likely go in in third position. Here he is. Yeah, there he is. So Sweden one, two, and three. And but that's a weird exit direc yeah, uh, direction. Yeah. Yeah. I think he will try to run around the green area and not go th yeah. totally through it, um, as Anton Johansson did as well. You have keyboards here, as we said before. It's usually not a good sign if you see the. Someone compared to Jansson. You just see the difference in speed here. Oh, and then you have mistake. the mistake again. But you could also see the difference in the speed in yeah. orienteering. Maybe that Kibbutz is not on top physically, but speed he is run running at and the orienteering at Anton Johansson is just incredible. He is absolutely on fire. And I wonder whether he where I wonder where he caught the other two runners. Because that'll have given him a lot of confidence to, to know where you know where he was at there. And then you've got six eyes going around together um, at that particular point. I really wonder where he managed to catch them, but goodness me, those his, his that high speed just looking fantastic on the GPS tracking. Mm, and I mean he's still in the lead at the first TV split. And uh, there are not many runners left, only two, I guess. Um, maybe no four runners, Timo Silt, Mika Kermula, Gustav Berryman and Thomas Krifta.
Well, Here's the leader. Already 40 men in the finish. <laughs> Anton Jonsson is going to have a long, has nervous, finished. nervous wait here, especially as Goal I'm sure he's going to be looking at the come. tracking and, and seeing minutes, what's going to happen, who final. can challenge him. But he, he will have that confidence of knowing he's had a good race all the way around. This looks like Timo Sild and the direction of approach is good, so we can probably infer but a good time choice isn't. for him. Time is off the pace. Yeah, he was off the pace even at the pre-warning control, uh, which was control number five, so the one before this one. So three runners have started after Timo Sild. His best middle distance was seventh place at the European Championships. That was back in 2014. And maybe a chance to go in somewhere around seven, eight, nine. But I think you know if if we if we're right and he has taken a good route choice, then you know he's going to overtake all of those others that have lost a minute or yeah. so from that wrong route choice. So actually, you know, it's Timo Sild in. in equal seventh there, alongside Viktor Svensk. This is Kratov. Alexander Kratov on the way to the second TV split. We saw him earlier in the race, not on the best route. Um, we'll go in somewhere around position 10, maybe. There we have Rolf Street at the moment, ninth position, 317 behind. He is. Uh, Punching there into ninth position, 256 behind. Really aggressive running through there. Here's Daniel Hoodman into the finish. What has he managed to do today? It will be outside the top six. Will he get into the top 10 at this point? I think by the time we have some of the faster runners through, it will not be outside of the top 10 for Daniel Hoodman. He will not add another medal to his impressive tally. But we know also he he, had, he hasn't been feeling well the last couple of days. Uh, that illness that has kind of pretty much spread its way through half of the, the Swiss camp. Daniel more Hubbard, than half the Swiss camp, half, I would say. I think, yeah, Daniel Hubbard and Matthias Kubert affected. Uh, but his was really lying flat uh, the day of the long distance and also yesterday. So it's very hard if you don't feel on top. It's not only that you can't push your body that much, but it's... Like, it's hard to get a good feeling on this course anyway. And uh, then you add these factors on top and it makes it just difficult. And here we have Kirmula, see who's struggling. And we see Gustav Berryman at a really good position there. Kind of, say, kind of the same situation as for uh, Hovald. And then losing a lot of time here. He was 13 seconds ahead and that is, that's, it's going to be really, knowing how good Anton Johansson's, the rest of his course was, it's going to be really hard to catch can that. can tell that Kirmula has lost control here, just turning around the head, trying desperately to get in some features he can navigate with. Now I think he spotted the control, here it is. 26 <laughs> behind and to 14th position. But if we look at the big gaps at the finish, you know, there's still things that can be done there. So Gustav Bergman, we know, went straight to this control, mm -hmm. to number six. It was not good. He was 13 seconds ahead of the current leader at the control before this one. And, and it's not, it's, this, is, this is not good for, for Gustav. We for expect me. him to come from the right there through the bushes. This is Ruslan Glebov. Didn't see him so far in the picture, but it's okay. So if we think we've got Oli Oyanho in the second silver medal position at the moment at the finish. He won't be quicker. Eskil Shinneberry is in third position at the finish. So mm -hmm. Punching into fifth position here. 153 behind Anton Johansson, still leading in all of the TV controls.
And I was about to say, we're still waiting for Gustav Bergman, but here he is. And look at the time loss. Uh, it will be a minute. But it's still... I mean, he only lost <laughs> 55 seconds doing that. You could, it could have been more than a minute. But still, I mean, now he has this 47 seconds and he, he, you, you're not able to kind of win that back technically because Anton Jonsson had just a very, very good run. This is Kibbutz on the way to the second TV split, but uh, we have seen that before. He not a good uh, start into the race, not a good middle section either. Yeah, Lost, that missed uh, the control three 10. and a half minutes between control seven and fourteen, and now struggling again. Yeah, we know he made that mistake. We can see it on the GPS tracking at control number ten, and just falling back and back in this point. And it's kind of the same thing for him as for Hoopman. I mean, he has been off both having coronavirus, most likely, and then also adding the stomach problems. And I mean, yeah, as we said before, it's it's not nice because you can't push your body so far so fast but it's it's also not nice because on top you have to be you have to focus all the time and it's as soon as you start to do mistakes i think it's even harder to keep focus we follow aston key then into the finish it looks like it's going to be well into the top 20 at this point really great result then for aston key can't wait to see what he does uh, over the next few years as well getting more and more experience uh, under his belt so 19th position for key at the moment Rim is his best discipline in orienting sports Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, this is Riedefeld, Orianau, and uh, Johansson. You can see Johansson choosing this small depression, the hill to navigate with here. Here it's actually quite okay open to control nine. It's not as green as it looks like, or not as dense as it looks like. Um, now we go doing well to 10 as well. Oh, a small miss from Riedefeld, but not too much. Just mm -hmm. a little bit further behind. Good direction to 12. So from Riedefeld, this is Hovald, Florian Hovald. If we remember, he was ahead at control number five and then did that route choice error, but we uh, saw he had okay really here. good speed, so this is good. Yeah. Uh, but this is the control before, though. This is not the control where we get the time. No, but uh, if you look uh, on third position, Oli Oyanau, one th 33 behind. Takes around, let's say, 35 seconds maybe from one control to the other. Yeah, look, he's caught, he's caught up time compared to control number seven after that route choice. So, you know, he was 127 behind. It's, oh, it's such a shame with, with the route choice there. It's so, been so decisive for this race. Mm, heading down here. Oh. This is just, you can see here, it's so hard. You can see how he's going down with his head <laughs> to try to get some features. And there's I so think many fallen trees as well. A bit more to the left, not to the left from this position, more to the right. And now he's doing a mistake. Oh. Not good here. I and think he was to the right of the hill. Yeah. In the green, you don't. You actually don't want to be in the green for this one. You want I to be in the in the whites. And now this is just going to get now bigger, he's lost and bigger and bigger. You can feel it. That and the thing is as well, you you don't see the features around. You have all these fallen trees that make it difficult to keep direction. Shake of the head. And there. you have the cameraman <laughs> yeah, that puts so the camera in your face all the time. This is the worst possible feeling, I think, to be kind of running around in circles and having the camera follow you as well. It's really not very much fun and he's going to have to try and find something definite to relocate on because, I mean, just look around. There's everything kind of looks the same, but now, there we go. So you're lost about a minute here. Yeah, I'd say even more than. And I mean, that, that, that could, was a, could be even a top five position he lost there. Let's see here. Well, the mistake will be then at control 18. So this is the comparison between Oyanau who's in second position, 148 behind Johansson in the finish. Oh, well, here, oh, it's, yeah, it's control 16 is missing. 
Yeah. Just a kind of sliding down too far to the right there. Yeah, and you just have that direction mistake coming out of control 15. You're not, you, you know, and a it's few not degrees the, off in your compass. Not the and best direction it. out from the control leader. <laughs> no, you've got to try and recover from that one. Here's Alvin Riedefeld. Mm -hmm. And this is a quite an okay time as well. He has one control to go. It's the same situation as for Hoval before, but a better time oh, here. This is looking pretty good. We oh, saw good speed here as well. Yeah, and you maybe. Can see, it was only 15 seconds at control 5, 16 seconds at control 7. So, quite similar speed. Small disadvantage from the beginning, but you can also see that even if he is doing good race, it's hard to win back those 19 seconds because Jonsson didn't do any no. bigger mistakes either. So, you, ha you really have to do it physically, as it looks, at least from the parts, from the bits we have seen. Ooh, okay. Now look at this, six seconds. Now you can make a difference, now he can strike. He'll have no idea what's been going on in the forest ahead of him, but the six seconds there. And we look back at the finish, Kratov, Alexander Kratov from Ukraine into the finish there. Such a great sportsman, such a great orienteer, has had a tough time this year, of course. It's for all of the Ukrainian team, it's it, I know I talked to him a bit, it was very hard for him to keep focused on the training, especially the first month. So, we'll be top 10, we'll go one second slower than Ralph Street, so ninth position for him. Pretty consistent race behind Larry Sild now who we saw the route choice to number six. We saw him penalized because of that and dropping more time now here on his way to control number 16. Should just be in here, yep. So same time as Ralph Street, who we know currently in the finish is eighth. So still the chance for a quite good result. You see the mistake oh, here. It. It's just off a little bit of direction, getting into a depression and then not really knowing what to do there. You've almost got to go into every control with a plan B and a plan C yeah. as well. You know, what happens if I'm a little bit too far to the left? What happens if I'm a little bit too far to the right? If I'm too short or too long on the control? Okay, standings then at split two. We haven't seen everybody through this point yet, but these are the standings. Sweden, one, two, three, and five at that point. But really looking at Albin Riedefeld, the only one at this point who's being able to challenge Anton Johansson, who is in the lead at the finish. And we also know that Svensk and Beimer did drop down in this final part of the course, being on sixth and seventh position in the finish. So here we see Riedefeld compared to Johansson. And it's a really head-to-head -head fight here. A bit more straight by Johansson. But Ooh. the faster running here, faster orienteer from as long Riedefeld. As he's distinct at the control, yeah, looks good. It's hard to say if the GPS is ah. really, really well positioned. Because you can see that they yeah, that kind of they're about the same. I think that they're off slightly parallel to yeah. each other, I think. Oh, they are neck and neck, those two. Oh, nervous times for Anthony Hansen, watching uh, his teammates contend, watching the GPS tracking. But actually, uh, he's pretty happy there. He should be, definitely. He really should. Of course, who wouldn't be enjoying with such a time? He really is enjoying, is enjoying that leader's position on the leader's chair. And this is why, come on, look at this, 148 still at that point. But I mean, he's, he's looking at the run of Albin Riedefeld, of course. Yeah, of course. But, you, you know, he knows he knows he had a good run for the, for the rest of the course as well. So he knows it's close, but he knows he's already done a good job and you can't get too much better. And, the, the, you know, there's still a lot of controls. There's a lot of green to go through. But it's, you also know that the maybe, maybe runnability got a little bit better for Riedefeld in the end of the of the competition That's here, true. because Especially Johansson was quite the, the early goods. starter. 
Yeah, especially going through the yellow bits. Uh, 18 to 19, I think that's going to help a lot. And maybe even towards the, towards the 20th control. And then lots of long grass towards, towards the, the last part as well. So we'll, we'll see. Timo Sills, this is control number 15. Again, we, it looks like I think he took the, the correct route choice into into number six on that longer leg, but just, I think, probably not having as, as high speed as maybe some of the others losing time here and there. Okay, back to the finish. Here's Ruslan Glibov. It's going to be in the top 10 for him. Just behind his teammates. Well, five seconds between two Ukrainians. And some consistency from there. Matthias Kibert. I mean, we were spoken of his problems with illness in the run up to this, but there was mistakes as well, most notably to number 10 and then losing other bits of time, I think, here and there as well. He won't be happy with that, but they can't all be your best races. <laughs> At least that's what I tell myself anyway. <laughs> uh, it's a tough day again for the Swiss team. This is Gustav Bergman, and I think this could be quite a, quite a good time. This On the way the to the second TV split, so he's one control to go. But I don't think he's far off. He's some, um, uh, let's say, half a minute, a bit more to go from this control before. It was 35 seconds behind at control 14. A little bit, little bit better speed between control 7 and 14 in this more open area. You can see quite attacking style here, running and orienteering through the green area. Together with Mika Kirmula. Yeah, you have to drop down that slope and then just be really direct. And so he was. Good. Yeah, it was uh, 11 seconds faster just from control 14 to 16. He's catching time. I think he's on for a medal. What color will it be? Who knows? Um, but he's certainly going in the right direction. Let's have a look then. Riedefeld mm -hmm. and Johansson. You can see now it's definitely Whoa. an advantage for Riedefeld. And really seen that bit of... Uh, for Johansson. Oh. oh, he's going oh. different routes. We haven't seen that before. I think it's not too bad. But let's see. Oh, it's, it's it, good. If he came it's up that good. way first time, I think it was he, he would get the feedback that, that there's a good track down there. It's oh. quite similar, maybe a little, 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 little bit better. Because that, that bit along the edge of the open, that was where it was really good in the terrain. So, Rita Feld, what can he do? Kenny Kivacast, though, into the finish. He's going to be outside the top 10 after really good qualification. He's going to go better, though, than his long distance result in 26. He should be pleased with that. In fact, he's never been in the top 15 at a major championships before. Will this be the day he'll be in that top 15? Good performance from him, and with we know Larry Sill, Timo Sill, not having the best, you know, having okay races, but not super good like Evely Karsku. Will he be the best Estonian today? Yeah, Kivik has goes into the 12th place, losing four minutes, and now Swiss fans will wait for it. May well be his today. best uh, result at these championships. Florian Howald in here. Oh, he's had a bit of an up and down mm -hmm. competition. It was really strong. The very, very first half looked like he had strong speed but as well. But if he would not have missed that yeah. control, we, see, we saw him in the picture, then it would have been a really good race here. I think he would be in a medal spot if it wasn't for that mistake, even with the route choices that he took. And even with this mistake, it's still a chance for the top 10 here. Just showing how good of a speed he had. Yeah, so much of that course was done right for me, for Florian Hoval. It's just such a shame that, that there's the route choice and then that mistake that we unfortunately saw on camera just pushing him down outside the top six. We have pre-warning for Albin oh. Riederfeldt. Here he is. 
Alvin Riedefeld looks surely on, on for a medal here. He's got a, he had a big gap at 21. That this is uh, good enough. This is going to be good enough for Alvin Riedefeld here. He's going to be the new European champion. He may, I think he is very good on it for this one. That route choice as well to number 20. Fantastic stuff. And Riedefeld takes the lead here. Looking good to be and the new uh, European champion. And you mentioned it. I mean, it's not a typical uh, Riedefeld route choice between 19 and 20, but I mean, uh, it just shows you how well prepared he is for this competition. He avoids the green when he gets the chance to, and uh, in the finish, I mean, it's 17 seconds ahead, and I think the gold medal. I think the gold medal as well. I think there's one man who could possibly challenge, and that is Gustav Bergman, but I think he will end up with a medal just I mean, to what color. It will be, I think this last route will be decisive, because I don't think that Gustav will go around. No. I have a hard time to see that, and if he can execute this really in an attacking style and don't miss, there might be a chance that he can get close, close. Yes, oh, the top two, congratulations there from Anton Johansson to Albin Riedefeld. They will, they have got medals, those two men. And it could very well be Sweden 1, 2, 3 here. Oh, and think about the relay tomorrow. Oh, good position, very good position for the relay. After uh, maybe, I actually think in the women's a lot of disappointment for Team Sweden, and usually, it's it the other way around. Usually it's the other way around. It really is. Thomas Krivda then is in 12th position. He is going to be well outside the, the top 10, I think, by the time it gets to the finish. Well, you never know. There's been a bit of changes in the last section. But, I mean, look, look at that. In the standings in split two, uh, Sweden have five of the top six positions at that point. Of course, we know it didn't quite go as well for Emma Svensk in the very, very last part, but we will see what happens. Here's Larry Silt then. And of course, he's going to be cheered home here by all of the home crowd. His older brother is still to go, started four minutes after. And he will probably be yeah, a little bit better than Kenny Kivakas, so will be the best um, Estonian so far. But maybe maybe there was a chance of them doing a little bit better, or maybe on their day. But no, 13th place for Larry Sild. I mean, it's a quite a good result, but regarding the qualification they did, uh, you could hope for a yeah, little bit yeah. more. But it, I mean, it's a good result. You have uh, him on 13th uh, position. You have Kenny Kivikas on 15th. Uh, might get in Timo Silt somewhere there as well. So if you have three Estonian runners with in the top 15 or just outside, that's that's a good result as a team. And that's also a promising uh, relay team then. Wow, yes, definitely. Um, we, we have the same arena for all the competitions. It's quite strange. It's quite unique, really. So all the terrain is, is really quite similar around here. Mm -hmm. And let's see let's here. Now we have them in the picture. Johansson Riedefeld. This really is the part where Riedefeld got uh, ahead of Johansson. And you see that there's small disadvantage for Berryman in this section. Small, small, small mistake there. Johansson. Yeah, a small mistake for Berryman there, just maybe bouncing off the edge of that. And uh, it's very open. much depending on how well he gets through the green areas here, Berryman. My guess is that he will go straight ahead. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but it looks... Yeah, it looks a solid looks bronze very medal for good. him. Yeah. It looks, looks very good for the two others. If you think Oyanaho is currently in the bronze medal position, I think, uh, you know, you can't catch up that much, um, even if you're Gustav Bowman, he will. That, that uh, championship title still eludes him. But another really consistent performance. I mean, really, that, can you say, will, will the gap be as much as that route choice to, um, to control number six, where he went straight? Yeah, definitely. I think that that's about the point where he lost the mm. gold medal today. I mean, if you look at the at the part after that, this section, especially the fast section uh, at control 12, 13, 14, he was really strong there. Um, but of course, I mean, uh, we had one clear route choice and 
route choices are a part of the competition as, yeah. as well. So, yeah. um, in the end, everything has to get together to win a gold medal, and uh, of course, that's the way it should be as well. Yeah, I we we saw that in in both the races. You have to manage all the different types of terrain. You go, yeah, Estonia is green, but actually not all of it is not all of it is green. There are actually some very runnable bits in the south part. I really even tell if, you that as well. Even if they're not that big and they don't appear that often, there are they nice bits in this <laughs> middle distance part. They really are. No, it's actually quite an, it's quite a nice map, but it's green and it's perfect for a for a championship. I do it's, agree, yeah. Yeah, uh, we mentioned that before. It's not the one you enjoy going out for just uh, uh, an easy orienteering training, but it's definitely worth uh, uh, championships because if you have this nice terrain where, you, where it's easy to get a flow, everyone will handle that in a perfect way. But it's those things where you have to adapt to the terrain, where you have changes in terrain, where you have to change your orienteering technique and adapt it to the course. That's where you get the really interesting courses, and this one was totally worth the um, uh, European Championships. And of course, if the if the course is worth a European champion, then also the European champion is worth his medal. Yeah, it was impressive stuff. Gustav Bergman then in towards the finish. It looks like it's going to be a bronze medal then for Gustav as he runs in here. You can see, yeah, he's already down behind that time of Albin Riedefeldt. And for me, for me, it is that it is that route choice. It's that route choice to control number six that's cost him a gold medal. Never you can see it here. Result. It's more than 55 seconds he lost there in the finish. It's uh, going to be less than 55 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, but fighting hard as always, looking for the bronze medal. He's going to have a big buffer in the end and will get that bronze medal. And uh, in, a t in a terrain that I thought would maybe be a big leveler across the nations, Sweden have done it. Yeah, but if, if you look at the results from the long distance, you had Scandinavian runners all the way from position one to like 14. And if you look today, it's only actually the French runners, Loic Capern and uh, Mathieu Perrin, who made it into, yeah, and, uh, and Florian Hobel made it into the uh, top 10, not coming from Sweden or Finland or Norway. So, uh, Scandinavians seem to like this terrain here. And uh, I mean, Loic Capen, we don't know which how, how much of a part he how was much together. Of an part he played, but yeah. definitely a very, very well performance by Mathieu Perrin. Made it, uh, as far as I know, more or less all alone into this eighth position. So I think we will uh, wait for the maybe the last starter, Thomas Krivda, um, into the finish. But um, still, the chance for a top ten here was to 35 behind in 12th position in the finish. The time for a top ten is 3:26 behind Florian Hovald at the moment. So still a chance for him to get into the top ten here. But this is, uh, you know. Looking at looking at these final kind of stages, and maybe let's go back to something we were talking about earlier. None of our early starters feature in this top ten. If you're oh, looking, definitely. if you're it's looking at uh, Emil Svensk, um, uh, Kasper Fossa, uh, Magna Daly, none of them. But in you can the top say 10. that uh, it even makes the performance by Anton Johansson more yeah, uh, yeah. impressive because even though he was he wasn't an early starter, he was running in the middle. Um, of the competition here, but still, I think with every runner, the track or the course get a little bit got a little bit faster. Maybe the difference in the end wasn't that big anymore, but uh, definitely more impressive to run um, fast from a position early out in the race. But at the same time, we've mentioned that before as well. It's not only the final that counts; it's yeah. also the qualification. Yeah. So it's it's a disadvantage, but it's not unfair. Well, that's why I like having the, these qualifications, because it means it's not all based on the world rankings. The start list is based on the qualification, not those world rankings. When, when you know, when we know there are better opportunities from runners from some nations to pick up world ranking points than others. I mean, yeah. and some people with, you know, so few races over the, the past few years hardly have any world ranking Or injuries. Points. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here we have the comparison of the four fastest runners today. You can see here. 
Gustav Bergman in the lead at control five, going straight through the green, which costs him the gold medal. All the other three runners in the top four and all the way around, you could see that Oyenau here actually is almost as fast as Bergman at this at control six. And then, of course, he has to first regain this time to be able to be back in the fight. But at this time here, he's almost together or at the same speed as Riedefeldt. We did a small mistake there at control 10. Just a very small one. And Jensen here very, very fast Ooh, in this section here. From very to, to 13. Yeah, when, the, when they entered this part here, this second half of the course, Johansson was very good in the beginning of it. And then here, the point where Riedefeld passed Johansson. He had a small hesitation there just before control 18 as well. And then this one, look at this, control 19. <laughs> just running out. We haven't really seen that before. Or at least we didn't have it in the GPS. I was thinking about that when I was pre-running, but it's like when he had in mind the green before, in some parts it was quite okay. So mm. if this green would have been as the one at control 18 where they came from, then it would have been faster to go straight. But you have to adapt. I mean, you see how the green is at control 19. You have to adapt, make a short decision and yeah, make your decision there for the route choice. And now let's hear a bit from the winner from today. Yeah. And Alban, congratulations on your victory. Tell us about your race. Uh, it was a very good race. Uh, I felt from the beginning that I had really good speed today, but I saw the course and realized that uh, this will be really technical. So some small hesitations, but uh, I managed to avoid the uh, big mistakes and uh, and then in the end just pushing everything I had. So uh, it was uh, it was a very very good race. And how happy were you about the execution of your race? We see a tough terrain, many big runners losing time out there. How were you able to do it so well? Uh, I think I, I realized that it was going to be tough, so I, I tried to, like I said, slow down a little bit through the technical parts and take some safe routes around a little bit to, to just be extra safe. So I think maybe it wasn't the best on each leg, but then in the total I think it was a good strategy. And did you have a good feeling out there that you could be running for a medal? Yeah, yeah, I, I felt like uh, it's always hard to say, but I, I focused on this race for a really long time and I knew the shape was really good from the qualification and then, then I know I can be up there when I have a good race, so yeah. And this is your first uh, international senior medal at a championship uh, individually. Uh, how is that? Uh, I don't I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's hard to describe. I've, I've been dreaming about this for so many years and now taking the last step up to the medals, it's, uh, it's amazing. And three Swedes on the podium today. Why do you think Sweden are so good today? I think we had really good preparations and uh, we have pushed each other like in, in the last sessions here and also I know this kind of really technical orienteering, it suits us well, both me, Anton and Gustav, so yeah, and then we just had a good day. <laughs> and there are relays coming out tomorrow, do you think we should look out for, for Team Sweden tomorrow? No, I don't, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I think we will have um, actually like uh, two or three really, really strong teams, so it will be a, a big fight, but uh, relay is always, uh, it's always something special, so we will see. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations, Alban. Thank you. Oh yeah, always something special. We're really looking forward to that uh, relay. But yeah, the, the Swedes are prepared well. And I, you know, Alvin Riedefeldt, a forest specialist, another kind of forest specialist who has, he said he's been preparing for this race a long time. It was meant to be initially two years ago. He's Yet. had two extra years of preparation and it's paid off, I think, to have that focus. And he didn't have to switch from the sprint focus to yeah. the forest. That's one factor he didn't run. He, was, he wasn't supposed to run the, uh, the long distance yeah. either. Uh, that's another factor. Yeah. And uh, one thing I noticed, like we had two Swedish uh, winners here with uh, Martin Rekborn yeah. and Alvin Riedefeld, but it's not the ones we had maybe high, highest up on the list, no. but it just shows you uh, how good of a team they have. The, it, both, uh, I mean, so far we were often talking about the Swedish women's team, but also the, the men's team is so strong. And when uh, I think he just... Uh, named it perfectly there. They're so strong in this technical part and this execution of this um, very tricky parts and uh, that, was, that was the key today. 
together with the clear strategy he had, yeah. not trying to be the fastest on e every leg, but put every leg together and be the fastest on the whole course. I mean, we talked about this so much during the women's race. It's getting the right balance of the speed and the accuracy. And that is exactly what he did. He was able to maybe hold back on the speed a little bit. And what you lose from that, you gain in the accuracy. Really, I mean... Yeah, really strong. That's that's exactly how you do it, and he's rewarded with being in the top ten now on the in the World Cup. With one race. Yeah, exactly one race. I mean, come on, that's great stuff. And Casper Foss is still well out and out leading the way with great results in Sweden earlier on. But yeah, yeah not his really his terrain, really his championships so far for our current leader in the World Cup standings. But um, yeah, I think I think we've seen quality orienteering from our from our two winners today, really, from Adam Riederfeldt and from uh, Simone Abersold managing all the different parts of the race really well. Yeah, of course. Uh, both of them had really good races technically. Uh, all of the medalists, at least in the men's race, had a very good um, race technically. Mm -hmm. Also Gustav Bergman had a very good race technically, but he missed the route choice and that was just that one decision, uh, wrong decision too much. It was maybe just one wrong decision, but this is just not good enough today. Yeah, no, so close it seems like he, he is for so long and, and yeah, we've kind of mentioned that there was a so many fantastic Swedish women in the last few years really kind of, again, like packing out these top places. Um, and the men, you know, not seeming to do it quite as much, uh, but now they, they, they have that dominance um, from not just one Swede, but women. We have to be fair also to mention that, of course, um, in the women's class, you, you may, might have like 10 runners or five to seven runners who can win a race maybe in the men's it's, class. Oh, I mean, if really you look open. at it, it's really open. Oh, it's and really, it's, yeah. it's so hard to place many of your runners from one national team into this top three. And I, I asked you before the race, who do you think is going to win? And yeah, I think you said something like, oh, it's the hardest question ever. Yeah. I mean, from the women's race, but even more so for the men's race where it's so open. Yeah, I mean, it's very open. My pick was uh, Gustav, but, at this, but just to add one second later, but that's what I pick every race, every <laughs> middle distance, and it never pays off. And it's, I mean, it's, he's always a good guess, but in the end, so far, there was always the little thing missing to win it. A little thing. It was a route race this time. Alvin Riedefeldt got it right and it had that super high speed uh, through the terrain. Even if he said he was kind of making extra checks, just being really, really comfortable, it meant that he didn't make uh, any mistakes. And then I love that route choice. He was already in the lead at 19, but I love that route choice that he went out to the path. It, you know, it really, really paid off not going on the red line uh, on that one at all. And he is rewarded. And look how many blue and yellow shirts are on the top of that podium. I think uh, Team Sweden will have, be having a little bit of a party. And then they've got to select, I don't know if they selected their relay teams already or if they've got to select their relay teams uh, tonight. But of course, they, um, Alvin Riedefeldt said it, you know, they've got, they've got, they'll have three top teams racing uh, around there. So can we see, um, you know, all of those teams doing really, really well. I'm sure we will see, but it's actually, it's really been a great afternoon full of really, really top orienteering. And I think after the thunderstorms we had uh, just before we came on air, things have kind of managed to hold out ultimately. Fantastic races. It's all Albin Riederfeldt and Simona Abersold crowned the champions tomorrow. It's the turn of the relay. We'll be back at this same arena, back in this green terrain. Who will take the medals? We will wait and see. Bye-bye.
and then he has like two races out of nowhere, and he's like, I really do it again. It's like, how do you do that? I'm just going to leave myself in here for a while, yeah. or maybe yeah. I can 